No, no. Who's there? Hashtag. Hashtag who? Hashtag no joke. Eddie Nestor, no joke, and there's no jokes about it. No jokes about it. No, no, no jokes about it. Eddie Nestor, no joke, and there's no jokes about it. No jokes, no jokes, no jokes, no jokes. Eddie Nestor, no joke, and there's no jokes about it. Best podcast on the air, and it's a shame to live without it. Curtis Walker, funny guy, telling truths, never lie. With Boss Lady by their side, you know the limit is the sky. No disparity, just hilarity. With the clarity, even giving back to charity. That's the ACLT, helping people in need. With founders and trustees wanting you to succeed. Mm. African Caribbean, leukemia trust. African Caribbean, leukemia trust. African Caribbean, leukemia trust. They're not in African blood, fun over the doing runs. They're doing so much good, so just sit back and have fun. Hashtag no jokes is really second to none. No, no, who's there? Hashtag. Hashtag who? Hashtag no joke. Eddie Nestor, no joke, and there's no jokes about it. No jokes about it. No, no, no jokes about it. Eddie Nestor, no joke, and there's no jokes about it. No jokes, no jokes, no jokes, no jokes. Eddie Nestor, no joke, and there's no jokes about it. Best podcast on the air, and it's a shame to live without it. Curtis Walker, funny guy, telling truths, never lie. With Boss Lady by their side, you know the limit is the sky. No disparity, just hilarity. With the clarity, even giving back to charity. That's the ACLT, helping people in need. With founders and trustees wanting you to succeed. Mm. African Caribbean, leukemia trust. African Caribbean Leukemia Trust Af- Af- African Caribbean Leukemia Trust Donating organs and blood, fundraising and doing runs They're doing so much good, so just sit back and have fun Hashtag no jokes is really second to none Knock knock, who's there? Hashtag, hashtag who? Hashtag no joke Eddie Nestor, no joke, and there's no jokes about it. No jokes about it. No, no, no jokes about it. Eddie Nestor, no joke, and there's no jokes about it. No jokes, no jokes, no jokes, no jokes. Eddie Nestor, no joke, and there's no jokes about it. Best podcast on the air, and it's a shame to live without it. Curtis Walker, funny guy, telling truths, never lie. With Boss Lady by their side, you know the limit is the sky. No disparity, just hilarity. With the clarity, even giving back to charity. That's the ACLT, helping people in need. With founders and trustees wanting you to succeed. Mm. African Caribbean Leukemia Trust. African Caribbean Leukemia Trust. Af- 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 African Caribbean Leukemia Trust. Donating organs and blood, fundraising and doing runs. They're doing so much good, so just sit back and have fun. Hashtag no jokes is really second to none. No, no, who's there? Hashtag. Hashtag who? Hashtag no joke. Eddie Nestor, no joke, and there's no jokes about it. No jokes about it. No, no, no jokes about it. Eddie Nestor, no joke, and there's no jokes about it. No jokes, no jokes, no jokes. Eddie Nestor, no joke, and there's no jokes about it. Best podcast on the air, and it's a shame to live without it. Curtis Walker, funny guy, telling truths, never lie. With Boss Lady by their side, you know the limit is the sky. No disparity, just hilarity. We need to succeed. Mm. African Caribbean Leukemia Trust. African Caribbean Leukemia Trust. Af- Af- African Caribbean Leukemia Trust. Donating organs and blood, fundraising and doing runs. They're doing so much good, so just sit back and have fun. Hashtag no jokes is really second to none. You to succeed. Mm. African Caribbean Leukemia Trust. African Caribbean Leukemia Trust. Af- 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 African Caribbean Leukemia Trust. Donating organs and blood, fundraising and doing runs. They're doing so much good, so just sit back and have fun. Hashtag no jokes is really second to none. Knock knock, who's there? Hashtag. Hashtag who? Hashtag no joke. Eddie Nestor, no joke, and there's no jokes about it. No jokes about it. No, no, no jokes about it. Eddie Nestor, no joke, and there's no jokes about it. No jokes, no jokes, no jokes, no jokes. Eddie Nestor, no joke, and there's no jokes about it. Best podcast on the air, and it's a shame to live without it. Curtis Walker, funny guy, telling truths, never lie. With Boss Lady by their side, you know the limit is the sky. No disparity, just hilarity. With the clarity, even giving back to charity. That's the ACLT, helping people in need. With founders and trustees wanting you to succeed. Mm. African Caribbean Leukemia Trust. African Caribbean Leukemia Trust. Af- 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 African Caribbean Leukemia Trust. Donating organs and blood, fundraising and doing runs. They're doing so much good, so just sit back and have fun. Hashtag no jokes is really second to none. Knock knock, who's there? Hashtag, hashtag who? Hashtag no joke. Eddie Nestor, no joke, and there's no jokes about it. No 
jokes about it. No, no, no jokes about it. Eddie Nestor, no joke, and there's no jokes about it. No jokes, no jokes, no jokes, no jokes. Eddie Nestor, no joke, and there's no jokes about it. Best podcast on the air, and it's a shame to live without it. Curtis Walker, funny guy, telling truths, never lie. With boss lady by their side, you know the limit is the sky. No disparity, just hilarity. With the clarity, even giving back to charity. That's the ACLT, helping people in need with founders. <laughs> Hello, how are you? We are back for one last time. Um, it, it feels a bit weird to know. You see, I know how much, how many things you can now do in six minutes. Uh, manage all the S's, and if you know, you know. Uh, good afternoon to you. This is the last ever no joke. It's uh, it came through the lockdown as an opportunity to explore things that particularly affect us uh, in a way that we haven't and don't see and in a way that I can't really on the BBC. Um, a person who's been there every single step of the way and now has to have a begrudging love and a respect for me as opposed to whatever he had before uh, is Mr. Curtis Walker. Greetings to you, Daley Thompson. How are you, sir? Greetings. Good morning. Good afternoon. Hope you're well. I've always had a, a grudging, um, no, I haven't, you're right. So. <laughs> <laughs> and um, lately, as she is, um, lately come and lately on the show, as always, um, is our discovery. We're claiming anything that she gets, Curtis, we're claiming. That's right. Good morning, afternoon. Wakanda. We can't hear you. Oh, she's learnt so much uh, over the years from you, Eddie. See, see how much? Yeah, you see how it's worked? And we've got two professors on, and it's just going to make us look bad. Donna, we can't hear you. No, we can't hear you now. Bye-bye. Uh, the boss uh, lady will... The boss uh, lady will... Uh, think, the boss lady will... Think, the point being look actually looking like she's looking for technicians. No, no, you know what? You know what it is? And I've seen a lot of this. Donna's vex with yeah. us like we have done something. And yeah, clearly always. you've had six weeks to put the picture behind you on the wall. And now you've spent so much time looking for earrings to buy and put on that you're not, you're not, you're not, you're not got it. And, um, you know, boss lady, hopefully, will sort you out. Let me just say... You're looking gorgeous thing. anyway. That's the main thing. You're it's miming. Not the main thing. It's it not is the main, the main thing. thing. It, it's so exactly what what's got us in and the she's situation. she's still talking and no one can hear her. The earrings look good. It's style over substance. We're not interested in that. That's, that's the what world politi- we're living in, Eddie. What, style well, over substance. And how's it, has it working out, Kurt? Terribly. <laughs> got no style. All I've got is substance. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You're, you're, you're the advert. Uh, no, sorry. For substance. Not that. No, <laughs> I'm not going to yeah. do that. Because uh, what happens is you set me up for those jokes. And then you start with your, oh, Eddie, fat shaming and da, da, da. I tell you what, I've well, lost a bit of weight. Just stop doing it, Eddie. Just stop I can't. doing it. I can't. As the actress said to the Bishop, I can't. Um, look, we've got lots for you. We've got what I'm calling my Donna. So yes. Think, uh, oh. Yes. Can you hear me now? Yes, yeah. my darling. You look know, wicked. No, it was just, we were just filling time. Style. No, I heard you. I heard you about style over substance, blah, blah, and blah, blah, blah. That was Eddie. <laughs> it's all me. All I said was blah, blah, blah. Everything is me. Right. So look, let me just tell everyone what we've got coming up. Um, I'm calling it um, my three wise friends. See what I did there? Um, Professor Gus John, uh, who to my mind is the leading, one of the leading academics of, of our time and certainly the person that I, I, I follow a lot and listen uh, to a lot because he's really old. And I think I have to get what he's saying now because I don't know how much longer I'm going to have to be able to listen uh, to, to, to the Grenadian born. It uh, came in 1964. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry. I've been told off. <laughs> Somebody, I'm saying thank you for the guess. Okay. Uh, let me just, t- I'll tell you what I'm told off in a minute, but I might as well carry on where I started. Uh, Gina, who is the only person who I know of in, who used to be in my circle, who says, I have made it. And we, three of us talked to Gina this week. Really interesting, isn't it? I mean, yeah, I had to cut it down. It was 58 minutes. I've cut it into 18. So, what the, yeah, it's ridiculous. So you're not in it at all, Donna. 
fart. <laughs> so what 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 we're going to do is uh, uh, that I'll was and... that was done on purpose. No, it wasn't. It's a limited. No, because time. I ask better questions than Curtis. How comes Curtis don't get shred down, but I get shred down? I have, I have, I have. Uh, uh, don't you worry, don't get... that. It's, you... setting, it's setting me up for a fall. You... Uh, you're not... It will be you're... enjoyable no matter what. I hope you kept oh. it light, though, Eddie. I know you're a man like go to the dark bits. I hope you kept it light because we had yeah. some fun in that chat. Yeah, that that will be in the um. In the one that we play yeah, in its entirety. The next week. <laughs> yeah, Donna, I've got to say your questions were fantastic. But when Thank I you. just took your question out, it halved the time of the video. <laughs> yeah, that's how long your question was. It was like, Gina, I've admired you and you know the thing that we're trying to work out. You can't ask us. Ask the question, Donna. Anyway, I, I will learn you. Cause Look who's talking. I will learn. Oh, shut up. And um, uh, and then we've got because when he's no Curtis, you're right. Because when you go on BBC London, Mister right. the Weird Man asks the half an hour question, and it's just for you right. to say yes. That's right. I listened to him last week. I got accused of stalking, so I don't know what BBC Radio London. Am I supposed to listen or not? When I listen, the man tells me I was, you're stalking me now. I said what? No, we, I'm we, trying to support we need, you. We need, we need a family intervention for this man. It's a lot of things. Where's okay. boss lady anyway? I, I'm just that's that's what I'm being told of for now. Um, but I also have to tell you, we've got Professor Kevin Fenton, who isn't on the program, who didn't come for rehearsals, but has assured me he'll be here. He retweeted my tweet, and you know, th these are serious times, right? Against the backdrop of COVID, and I know. I think I know more people who haven't had the vaccine that I have. And I've seen with those raves out there, lots of people think the virus doesn't actually exist. So we've got him. He's a topper, topper man, as they say. So if you've got a question, let's get it in now. I, I believe that he will come in because, you know, he'll have no fury as Eddie Nesta scorned if he doesn't. I believe he's coming on. Your chance to ask any Christy Eula about the vaccine, taking it, not taking it. Why do you need to take it? Booster, flu, jab, whatever you want to ask. I think we're really, really lucky to have the guests on this week uh, that we have on. Um, we as a program, as a show, uh, would be nothing, though. See, I'm trying to get it back uh, without, yeah. without the next person I'm about to bring on. She, from the three billion women on the planet, I've chosen her to be my life partner. <laughs> Boss lady! And Good she's night. chosen you to no. be her study in patience. <laughs> if I tell you what's happened this week, this week it's... Um, so Boss lady has qualified now as a PT. First thing, first, first thing she says to me is, um, look, I'm a PT now. I can't have you with your lard ass. You need to lose weight. Or I'm leaving you. Does that sound like my talk, Eddie? Uh, uh, and and I, I, I'm losing the weight just to spite her, Curtis. <laughs> no, I, I, love you, I, saw, I love you no matter what you look like. I saw one of your first clients, and he, he and, and she, both of them, are looking fantastic. They told me they've lost nearly half a stone with you. But they had it to lose. They did. <laughs> they they had did. It, they had Especially it. in certain areas. It's been going well, and they have lost... Um, a few pounds and it's going well my first client so yeah it's a, been a learning experience you know a bit nervous nerve-wracking need to get advice but um it's going they well i'm that. enjoying it I'm, I'm, in, I'm really enjoying it so yeah and donna i love your earrings well thank you darling i you know i tried to wear them because these are the earrings i was wearing when you asked who is that woman and eddie and curtis have just been so cruel and unkind so far this afternoon i think i might take them off no no no, no because you, you it's interesting that you came to our attention after the death of matt ratana and um yeah. you know Croydon has been in the news and this week's been curtis is talking about um me on bbc radio london but they put me on uh, the breakfast show, Vanessa's had a holiday. They haven't given me her money, by the way, but they put me on there and we've been covering the um, the uprisings of 2011. And it just seemed to me that Gus John is the person who predicted that when I listened to him, he predicted that. He's also been in um, uh, Subnormal, the program, the documentary that you would have seen, and the one that we spent a lot of time on uh, which was called Uprising and essentially about the new crossfire uh, and the uprisings in Brixton. So I'm looking forward 
to debating, to reasoning. We've got fun and foolishness as well. Let me see if I can find uh, a little video to start us off while the boss lady's here. Boss lady, have I told you that you look really nice? No, you haven't, but thank you. You look No, very I just said, have I told you? I didn't, I didn't say you do. <laughs> see, I just said, have I told you? Me. Can you see? <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't tell you that you are. I just asked you if I have. Right. Oh. Um, yeah, it's that kind of day. He don't you know see, Donna, uh, how the he monster. The mo Thanks. I'm. I have a lesson. I don't know if I can do no joke. You don't know the monster you lot have created. Listen, in this Curtis, house. what happens <laughs> is he's doing his exercise and the technique's a little bit out. So I'm just trying to correct. You know, I I want him to have a good back. And I know, I know uh -huh. what I'm doing. You don't have to tell me. You know how it is. Yeah, I know. He's ignorant. So, he was yeah. always that. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> so, so, so uh, sorry. No, Curtis used the word thus. That's what I was laughing at. <laughs> Hello? 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 Haven't you Biblical. listened to Eddie on the breakfast show? You learn new words every day. Jeez. <laughs> I don't know what they mean, though. Right, so um, I don't know about you. Donna, you talk about your um, other half a lot. Um, i seen you in a picture where you, you went to somebody's wedding like that. Yeah. <laughs> well done. Why? Did you look well bad? Done. No, no, it's fantastic. But you're, you're, I always think that you're not supposed to try to upstage the bride and groom. We didn't. Well, go in as superheroes. <laughs> no, let me put myself on mute and do a big belly laugh. No, 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 no. Here you go. Right. So I'm imagining <laughs> you and your partner. Go on, Don. This is you and your partner. Are you allowed to look at somebody when you're with somebody else? Curtis? Yes, Eddie, but you, what you yeah. find, sunglasses help. <laughs> if you've got a pair of sunglasses, oh, no. look at what you like. Especially a mirrored one. The thing look is, what you like. I want to know. Keep if... your head still and let the eyes do the work. But I want to know okay. if it works the other way around. If a woman of sees course. a man that she finds attractive, does the man mind? Oh, yeah. boss lady still at men all the time. All the time. Hold on. Women do it all the time. It's the, the way time that I walk you... street and people and women are just staring at me, and I have to say I'm not a piece of meat, and I tell their boyfriends, "Look, she's staring." It's the way that you stare. You can stare at somebody if you're with somebody. It's the way that you stare. If you're like leery and your tongue's out, it's the way is that, that wrong? you stare. Is that wrong? Yeah, yeah. that is you wrong. You must have your tongue out. You must have your. But tongue you're rubbing out. your knees as well. <laughs> what? If you're rubbing your knees. As is that wrong? Right. Okay. He's bringing, no, he's bringing in some blue bus argument. What's going one, on? Yeah, so what, one, what one one more. Yes, you should be able to look, but it's how you do it. Okay. And it's the All way right. you do it. I glance, not stare. Women glance. It's salacious. Now, if you it's see wrong. somebody that is so outrageously um, enhanced and, and, and kind of drawn, you're drawn. It's I'm just human with, nature to with, look, isn't I'm it? I'm not with you on this one, Kurt. Oh, right. Nobody asked you to be with me. You've never been no. with me. Right? Is it, is it wrong to look? Ladies, I'm asking. <laughs> is it wrong to look? For a man to... I don't really... Like, I've got the biggest bottom in the world, so it's, it's me walking down the carriage. I don't I know. So, I don't if know. you walk down the carriage and turn back quick, you'll see everybody <laughs> looking at you. Sometimes I've taken small children and prams with me when I've walked down the train carriage, so you know. Oh, yeah, right. Ouch. Okay, I understand what you mean. When I, I've been watching the Olympics and there are no black women in the high jump, and I was wondering why there are no black women <laughs> in the high jump, and it kind of makes sense now. Thank you for that, Donna. I truly appreciate that. No, no, no. What that we was segue into? No, I know. I know. Right, one more, one more silly one. Right, we can't. I'm, I am truly waiting for Professor Fenton, and I've got Professor John on. I might have to go to him. Okay. Because uh, there was an order that I had. You have a please, but while we're waiting, any question that you have, get it in. I am uh, confident that we will have him on. About the when vaccine? Questions about the vaccine? Yeah, yeah. Not about. Thank Niger. you, boss lady. You correct him. He needs that. Yeah, she wouldn't have done that when we started this. <laughs> I don't know. She didn't just take it and, and roll with it. it? She didn't just listen, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, coffee, I'm, I don't know. Listen, I'm going to go and see where Fenton is. Professor Kevin Fenton. Professor oh, Kevin really Fenton. Familiar. 
All right, then. Wow. So, um, look, we're, we're going to move on because we will do stuff. But let me just play another one, which I think uh, with the football was really interesting, Curtis, because thank you, boss lady, by the way. God bless you. Uh, you read out any comments that come in, uh, but I think he's just arrived. I think um, when the football was on, it was a big thing because the first time I saw a black man run around with the flag, uh, I think it was 1992, Linford Christian. I saw him wrap the Union Jack around him. Oh, by the way, um, happy Independence Day just gone for Jamaicans uh, that are, are, are watching this. So Catford must be buzzing right now because uh, that's where the majority of them live, apparently. So so we, we we had this thing, and we've always had it, where every year it comes up and on the radio they say, um, you know, I can't have a flag. I've got a flag of Nigeria, Grenada, Dominica, wherever, wherever. And um, all the white people phone up and they go, I don't, we don't, un we truly don't understand. It's a really hard thing to explain that if throughout your life you've seen something associated with negativity, then for you to take that negativity and wrap yourself in it is really difficult, no matter what I say. And I thought in a way that we'd come to a new age. Lots of the players for England were black or mixed race and they were, they, they were embarrassed. I did see this, though, before we have a quick chat about that. I did see this, that... That that made me laugh. That I um stay true to your identity. T take a look at this. In this life, you have to stay true to your identity. You see, someone like me now, I am ninja to the core. You can't question it. It's coming out, mate. <laughs> you better believe it, Billy. <laughs> see you at the public five, yeah. England. All right, mate. <laughs> stay true to yourself. <laughs> and that kind of that is kind of how many That's different how accents it, how many accents do you have good how many different ways <laughs> do you have of where you are because the beauty of being black you can land anywhere in the world and belong as long as you anywhere in the world and belong you know you go australia you could be aboriginal if you want as long as you can <clears> do the accent and live your life and that's the power of us you know um, the identity thing, going back to Linford Christie, you've got to remember Linford also carried a Jamaican flag in the other hand. So as much as he had the Union Jack at the time, he also had the Jamaican flag when he did his lap of honour. So he had both. And that is pretty much anybody who um, comes from immigr immigrants or whatever have that identity with the home country or the motherland. I think I anyone think so. does that. No, don't know. And it gets weird. Like, remember Bruno just didn't, and and he was the one who always embraced the flag at every, and it jarred, it does feel uncomfortable for some people. Yeah, there will it, come a point when you yeah. will wrap yourself in the flag, Eddie. I could see you doing that right now. Set out. I didn't I don't say know. that, Donna. I, I, just I don't said know. I, that, I don't it. know. I think, I think, I think for us, colour means something different from the younger generation. I don't think it is that. I don't think but it is. isn't just so colour, is it? It isn't just colour. You're saying colour. It? It's not just colour. It? It's is about it? your identity. It's about your parents, your grandparents. Somebody in no. your structure has given you something that you, you 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 yearn for. There's something that's in you that isn't comfortable in Britain it's for some people. Some people are extremely comfortable, whether you come from Italy, Spain. Even when we have the World Cups so and we have the Olympics, I can take you up um, Stockwell and it's little Portugal. At certain times of year, it's Portuguese. Yeah. The Portuguese come out, but there were a lot of them born and raised here, but they're still Portuguese when they when the sport comes on. And that is in, it's in you. It's in you. Mm -hmm. When Antigua wins anything, Eddie, or Dominica, where are you from? Dominica. When Ant Dominica wins anything, right? Mm -hmm. Don't you run... All right. When Dominica's competing in anything, don't you run and get your flag? Your BBC, how about that? Do you know what that stands for? That's what I'm saying to you. Right. OK, when 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 you look at, I don't know, a lot of those guys, they're mixed race guys. They, they Why wouldn't they wrap themselves in the flag? It's part of their identity. It's a different thing. My, my problem is, is that when I saw those guys rushing into Wembley, a lot of the guys they were pushing over to run through, they were African security guards. It looked like it's just like it's something about football that means even when they're winning, they find a way to lose. And it's just I just and it got we got caught up their in mental health. Well, maybe, but we got caught up in the three black guys missing the penalties. And then we forgot about what was happening at Trafalgar Square. We forgot about what happened. In the middle of a pandemic, how do you try to break into your national stadium when your team are in the final? How do you boo your own players before they play a game and then expect them to win? So I think that, you know, with that conversation, there's so many elements that we have mm. forgotten about because we got mm. caught up in these... um 
black guys missing a penalty. And when we saw Saka coming, all of us knew he was going to yeah. miss, and all yeah. of us knew what was going to come because yeah. um, you lined the three of them up together, and it it was it wasn't going to work. That was, but that, that was that's horrible. a feeling that resonates throughout my life. That feeling of anything, whether it's a um, mastermind or the news. I remember watching Trevor McDonald and every news story, and I know I wasn't alone. Make them, if it was a, a crime of, of kind of any kind of crime, make them not be black. Please don't let them be black. Yeah, I think there's so. that. I and think I so. had that feeling during the football. Why is he left these three till last? Oh my god, not even the three, the second, because I think they saw um, um, the first miss of a hero of theirs, you know, Rashford, and I think that rocked them. If if Rashford <laughs> could miss, what the hell can I, we do? A hero yeah, of theirs, they saw him miss, yeah, and I think that shook them more than any tournament. I Sorry, think there's brother. a lot in there. I think there's a lot in there. No, I was just trying to say, I think that um, identity is, is it, it's, a, it's a big topic. It's massive because I don't necessarily feel, I'm only British by birth. If there was one country called the Caribbean, I would identify with the Caribbean. You know, my parent, one parent's from Guyana, one's from Jamaica. So for me, but I know my children feel differently. My children see themselves more as European. So identity, and somebody just said in the chat, like, you know, I'm mixed race, but I identify as Nigerian. Uh, sorry to my French mum. So, you know, it's the way you feel about something, isn't it? Yeah. And I was... There's culture, my, there's yeah. identity, and there's nationality. And they're not... Yeah, they're and not that nationality, you'll people. never change in this country. As um, right. Donna just said, the younger generation will make the change. Right. But that thing about being British and every time there's something... And Britain's... <laughs> In that, I, in that, is, is that territorial okay. thing, that war thing, that violence that just exists in them. So when it's football, it becomes very tribal. And, and it's, it's an ugly, ugly, ugly side of this it. Like, part of just, let, let me close at that, because I think the professor's there now. Just to say, look, okay. I promise we will come back to it. And if there are comments, they, they will do it. I, I, I've been listening to David Lammy, who identifies as English, and it might be right for him. I can't identify as English personally. He identifies I, as English. I, I've seen I, his shoes. I see it as an ethnicity, and I don't know. <laughs> Come on, the man couldn't take it. Oh, we'll, we'll, get to, we'll get to we're, we're going to him because we're going to be talking about Tottenham. <sighs> Leave. Yeah, remember, just hold on. Yes? I don't know what's okay. the matter with it. My, <laughs> can I apologize for Donna? Look. We're taking your thoughts, right? We've got three fantastic guests. It's unbelievable. On any platform, and I believe this should have got to telly and it didn't. I believe that we should have got sponsorship and didn't, but we don't carry bad feelings. We move ahead, right? Upwards and odd ones. And I say to you that we've got three fantastic guests on the show today. I'm honoured and I'm proud, but I am probably going to try and find a way to give all three of them a hard time. Only because you would expect us to. You'd expect us to ask questions. The first uh, person I'd like to uh, invite on is the regional head for public health. So basically, uh, he's the man. In fact, before I bring him on, uh, let's, um, let's just play you uh, a little video, shall we? Here is a, who is about to come on to hashtag no joke. Tackling myths and misinformation is certainly a key part of what we do as part of the coronavirus response. This is Dr. Kevin Fenton, a regional director of Public Health England. As the COVID-19 vaccine is mobilised in the UK, uh, there are some communities which are very reluctant to take up the vaccine because of their fears, concern about safety, or some of the logistics of getting to the vaccine or real hesitancy because there are issues, trust issues that they're grappling with, with the vaccine and with the process of its development. Dr. Fenton is ensuring that accurate vaccine information is mobilized alongside it. You know, different communities are gonna have different levels of trust, different levels of health literacy and understanding and engagement. So you can't go into a community and assume that they're going to have the same understanding, uh, values, approach to thinking about the vaccine. And you only will be able to, to know that by listening to them and working with them. So uh, it is a great honour uh, on behalf of the whole team to welcome on to hashtag no joke Professor Kevin Fenton. Good morning. Good well. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hi, Eddie. Hi, Donna. Hi, Curtis. Good to be here. Hello. Yes, Hello. Be, before we get started, and you know we're going to get started, right? Mm -hmm. 
uh, let me just say thank you because I know you don't work weekends first of all I know that and I know the call upon you is a heavy one and for you to take the time to address us on this platform I appreciate it very much and I want I want to say that first of all because you don't have to right so thank you well, thank you, uh, Eddie. And you know, it's um, I'm here, and I, I before coming on, I was thinking about all of my health and social care and public health colleagues who are working this weekend and have been working every weekend throughout the course of this pandemic. And you know, it's what we do, but it's also good to take time to to spend it with you and colleagues and just reflect on where we are and what we've learned and what's coming next. So, where are we? Well, you know, you know the data, you know, we've, you and I have been chatting now <laughs> throughout the pandemic, but we're at this really interesting point where rates of infection are falling. Uh, they peaked at about mid-July, um, just as we were exiting step four of the lockdown roadmap. And we've seen consistent declines over the past uh, fortnight. The good news is we're beginning to see some stabilization and declines in hospital admissions as well, as well as ICU admissions are stable and in some parts of the city declining. So we seem to have passed a peak for the summer so far, um, and we will watch those rates closely as we go through August, as people go off on holidays and as we mix and mingle uh, in the city. So if they're doing well, then the people who haven't had a vaccine don't need to have it, do they? Quite to the contrary. And, you know, as you probably heard the new chief exec of the NHS on Friday say that nearly a quarter of people who are currently in hospital with COVID are young people under the age of 30. So it's a really important time for us to get those vaccines in the arms of everybody. Now, London, uh, you know, has been doing really well. I remember when I first spoke to you on vaccines, which was last Christmas, just before we went into the second wave and we're talking about hesitancy and what we needed to do we always knew that with younger people it would have been much more difficult and now we're seeing phenomenal uptake across the city from our young people but we know that there are some groups especially those living in more deprived parts of the city um, black men especially young black men uh, but also black and minority ethnic groups we're seeing lower uptake at this time so it's really important we get those vaccines in and protect everyone Okay, so look, well, the way we're going to do this, because I know we've got limited time, is yeah. I'm going to try and get as many questions as I can. Not from me, because you've yeah. answered lots of questions for me, but the, the point of it is to try and get people, including Donna and Curtis, to ask their questions. Uh, the person, the conduit through which they contact you, sir, is uh, my wife, Boss Lady Lisa. Uh, Boss Lady Lisa, can, can we start with a, a three or four questions for uh, Professor Kevin Fenton, please? Hello, Professor um, Kenton. I've got loads of questions coming in. Um, Lorraine says, okay. what are your thoughts about giving under 12 and pregnant women the vaccine? Mm -hmm. um, so I fully agree with giving pregnant women the vaccine. What we're seeing in hospital now are unfortunately a number of pregnant women who didn't get the vaccine earlier in the pregnancy, who are now developing COVID and probably putting at risk their own lives and and the pregnancy. So we're really working uh, now to ensure that more women are getting the vaccines, especially when they're pregnant. And we know that the vaccines have no impact on your reproductive health and will not affect your reproductive health uh, in the future. It's not connected. Well, even, and, and really even though you and I both know that tests aren't carried yeah. out on pregnant women. Um, so. Uh, uh, tests are carried. You mean coronavirus tests? Or? Well, well, you can't vaccine. I'm talking about the vaccine. Oh, you the can't, vaccine. You can't, you're, you're not going to test the vaccine on somebody who's pregnant, are you? Um, well, no, but now we have experience with they've more than you know 40 million people uh, receiving the vaccine in this country and over right. a billion people globally. So we know it's safe. Right. and it's effective. So even if pregnant women weren't included in the initial trials, we now have enough experience with research yeah, right. and implementation on that. Um, the second question, Lisa, was related to, you. Yeah, I had a two part. Um, no, it was under 12 under and pregnant 12. women. Under, under 12. 12. Yeah, so really, really important question. And you know, it's, um, it's good that 16 and 17 year olds are getting the vaccine now. Um, and I'm sure policy is going to continue to evolve as we have uh, more data. And you can see Scotland has agreed to, to vaccinate everybody over 12. So let's see what government policy does as the research evolves and as we have more information 
we make those decisions. But what we know is that infections are mild. Children are not really, especially under 12, are not a very strong spreader of infection, and they tend not to have any long-term side effects. So that's the reason why we're not rushing to vaccinate them. On that, and I will supplement these questions because you know that I could triple all of them, which is, <laughs> you know, lots of people are saying to me, my 16 and 17-year-old can't go to a pub to drink, can't get married, can't mm. make decisions like that. Mm. Yet medically... Uh, they have been regarded in a way as adults because 13 and 14 year olds have been able to get at the pill and birth control without their parents' knowledge for quite some time, haven't they? So, yeah, but, you know, this is where, you know, we have to take the evidence and policymakers will decide when we have sufficient vaccine, what are the risks versus the benefits? And at the moment, the policymakers in England have this decided that we'd go for, from the JCVI, the Vaccine uh, Implementation Board, Advisory Board, has said, do 16 and 17 year olds for now, prioritize them, and then we'll see what the data says. Also remember that there's a big issue about, should we be vaccinating young people who are at lower risk when we know that so many billions around the world still need these vaccines as well? So yes, protecting ourselves is important, but we also have a global responsibility as well. So we need to think about that too. Boss lady? Yeah, just to add to that, because a question has come in with the 16 to 17 year olds. Do they need the parents' consent or can the 16, 17 year olds make the decisions by themselves? They can make the decisions. And what Mm -hmm. happens if the parent disagrees with the 16? Sorry, sorry, that was the point I was making, boss lady. They don't need um, parents' consent. Yeah, Yeah, so let's get on. Let's get another question. Why is it that we cannot sue if anyone suffers any ill ill health from the vaccine? Wow. So this is a a really interesting uh, concern that people have raised, and some people are using it as a reason not to get the vaccine. The vaccines are super safe, and they're monitored in terms of implementation. If there are any side effects, uh, as you know, government will change policy or make recommendations uh, to improve the safety. Now, for everybody who's getting the vaccine under the NHS, you'd be protected by the rules, the rules that govern safety, effectiveness, compensation in the NHS. So I wouldn't worry about what relation, what uh, decisions have been agreed between government and pharmaceutical companies. What matters is the relationship between the NHS and you as a patient. And if there are any challenges, complications, then the NHS will take care of you. And the NHS will accept the liabilities in terms of providing that medication to you. But again, it has been safe. Side effects are low. And I really encourage people not to worry about those bigger policy issues, but really let's get uh, on top of this vaccination and the epidemic. If I could ask a question, what time frame? Do you give it? Because a lot of people I know who mm. are refusing to take the vaccine have said to me they are waiting to see what happens to those of us who have taken it. What is the time frame for them to then not have that excuse anymore? When will my left arm fall off? When yeah. will a magnet stick to my chest? I, I tried, it, I tried it, Curtis. I tried I'm, it too. I, 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 I put the magnet on my arm. <laughs> Curtis, thanks for that. That's a great question. And, you know, I, I would know. say the time, <laughs> the time, the time is now, right? More than 40 million people in this country have received a vaccine. And if we're going to see any major complications from the vaccine, we would have seen it a long time ago. Um, we now have seen the vaccine in the most frail of us, the elderly, their coping well with the vaccine. We've seen it effective in those with immunocompromised systems, younger people who have immunocompromised system. And what really is painful, Curtis, is when you hear stories of young people who are in hospital now who say, gosh, I wish I had the vaccine. If I had only taken the vaccine, you know, it would have helped me not to have so severe an infection. Or unfortunately, we've seen some deaths in younger people. Uh, and remember, the vaccine is also good, to, to, we know now, to protecting COVID, preventing COVID, and therefore reducing the risk of long COVID in the long term. And that's going to be important for young people as well. Let me jump in. Uh, boss lady, I know you're collating uh, more. Please forgive me. Let, let's cut to it, shall we? Uh, have you heard the conspiracy about Bill Gates? Have you heard about, you know, uh, these uh, multi-billionaires uh, whose plan is to run the world? Will we need to be taking a COVID injection uh, each and every year? Because now they're talking about boosters and you're encouraging more people than ever before to have the vaccine. Uh, and what about the idea? Lots of questions here, but they all roll into 
one theme. I don't trust Boris. I don't like what he does. He's never done anything for black people. So what? Here are the questions that come to me that I can't put to you on the radio, right? Okay. So I'm putting them onto you here, right? Which is, I don't like him. I don't trust him. He has never done anything for us. And therefore, why should we trust that they would have our interests at heart? And finally, this is a free country. It's a democratic country. Why is it that you are now trying to punish me by vaccine passports, da, 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 for making what? I believe, as a citizen, to be an informed choice. Hmm. So there's a lot there. First of all, you know, conspiracies, we have to be careful about conspiracies and repeating conspiracies. What you hear on YouTube and what you hear on WhatsApp and what you pick up on a text message does not replace science. It does not replace evidence. It does not replace the research that has been done and the millions of people who've got this vaccine over the past year and who are protected from that. Second, to your point about you know trust, yeah, I understand. Trust in government was one of the most significant reasons why people didn't take the vaccine initially and why we had so much hesitancy. But Eddie, the reality is the vast majority of Caribbean people now have had the vaccine. The vast majority of Black African people in London and around the country have had the vaccine. So those concerns are being addressed and are being addressed every day by the work that we're doing. And you're doing but it trust today, doesn't by come the overnight. Way. Yeah, trust doesn't come overnight. It's about truth. It's about consistency. And it's about time. And what we've had, and to Curtis's point, is time over the last nine months to have these conversations with community, with young people all over the city. I've spoken to thousands of people about the vaccines, and that's what we need to build a trust to help to get people over the line. I wouldn't worry about what the Prime Minister has done. Think about yourself. Think about your loved ones and how you protect them with this really effective vaccine. And, and to the idea, I went to the gym yesterday, and the guy serving me doesn't want it, hasn't had it, is incredibly fit. I read the story about the fit 42-year-old who wish he had exactly. taken it. I understand that. But, but, but put to me the point... Well, Eddie, it's a democratic country. Surely, if I feel as though I've done the research, I have the, the I have the right to make a choice on what I think is best for me. What do you say well, you to know, people like that? Of course, we all it's a democratic country. We have the right to do whatever we want to do, but we are in the middle of a pandemic, right? And we've lost hundreds of thousands of lives, as you know, to this disease. And uh, we also want the freedom to go out to the clubs. We want the freedom to go socializing. We want the freedom to eat indoors and to, to live our life again. But with those freedoms comes responsibility and a variety of responsibilities. The COVID vaccine isn't the first vaccine that we're asking everybody to get. Every child has to get their childhood vaccinations. Every winter, people over 50 have to get their flu vaccines. And we've been doing this for years. Now faced with a new pandemic, and it requires us to behave differently because nobody wants to get back to where we were over the past 18 months. I'm sure you'll agree with that. Eddie. Right. So um, we're coming to the end because it is a limited time and I do appreciate it. Boss lady. But Donna, I mean, look, do you want to ask a question? Donna, first of all. No, thank you. All right. So let's, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> Somebody has to be vaccinated. Yeah, yeah but, but it, it doesn't matter because b before you get started, that doesn't matter. The, what matters is, no, you know, every listen, we're here because we have free minds and you guys yeah. are here because you don't agree with me. And we have good arguments and people can come forward and say it. But if you've got the top of top of man here and you're not going to ask him a question about a doubt, anxiety, I, can't, I can only put Kevin in. So let me tell you about my doubt then personally, yeah, sure. uh, which I haven't talked about on the radio. I had the, verse, the first vaccine, and to tell you the truth, Professor, I haven't had the second one, and I don't know what's happened. I, I'm just, I'm filled with anxiety about taking the second vaccine. Am I the only person you've heard of with that? No, absolutely not. You know, anxiety or some concern about the second vaccine is, is, is not common, but it's something that we see. And we work with people to try and overcome it. For some, it's because they may have had a little bit of a wobbly after the first one. For others, it's because they don't have the time, they're busy, life has started again, and they can't get to a vaccine center. But Eddie, if, if there's one message you take away today, please get your second dose, because it is with the second dose that you get the maximum response in your immune system. And with so much Delta circulating still today, that is the protection you need. One dose 
isn't enough to protect you from Delta I, or from the wild strain. Yeah, but does that mean that we're going to have it every, every year? Why would you have the first and not have the second? What? Bro, 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 do I ask, year? Kevin, Kevin, just yeah. close, close your ears for a second. <laughs> do I get involved in your business and ask you why you do what you do? Yeah, just but we're talking out, about that. Stay out about my You're business. Talking, but <laughs> let me know what business. it is that's made you I don't go, know. oh, I do the first know. one. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm Give back the first one. Give I don't the first know. One, that's not I don't know. I don't well, know. You take the first one, there's somebody who wouldn't talk about them. Can, you can take I just the finish vaccine it? that I nobody else can have now because you've got it. I don't think we've got a shortage, right? So and I because don't you're short, you probably don't need to. <laughs> so we don't need to be taking you. every year. The, 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 is this now? Because this is. Sorry, boss lady, I promise you I'll shut up. Are we going to be having, because we now know you can catch COVID more than once because one of the Olympic gold yep. medal winners confirmed that for us. So, so are we now going to be having this vaccine every year? So we certainly know that we'll need a booster this year, especially for people people who are over 50 and people who are younger, but who have some sort of immunocompromised systems. Their, their systems are immunocompromised. So we really want to ensure the maximum protection. And we're doing that because of data from Canada, from Israel that says, um, in the, you know, even although the vaccines are very effective for people who are especially older, because you need to really boost your immune system, you need that booster. Now, we'll take stock next year because you may have new variants you may have different strains of the virus circulating where a vaccine may benefit but let's not cross that bridge just yet let's focus on the second dose eddie and then the booster in the autumn <laughs> <laughs> kevin, kevin and curtis on this <laughs> can't, can't well, let that one go well, well, I don't, boss, lady, boss lady come on because the time is going okay through. Boss lady. These, these are quite common questions um Someone yes. saying, um, why is the governor, government not promoting healthy options, promoting us to build our immune system, having healthier diets, healthier li lifestyles? Why aren't we testing antibodies before we give the vaccine? And also, the vaccine has been around for less than two years. How do we know that it doesn't affect our ability to fight other diseases that may come? Because it's okay. something that affects our immune system. I think that's... Yeah. Great questions. Yeah. Great questions. Uh, great, question. uh, great, great question. So, um, vaccine's been around for two years. Yes, um, we know that it's highly effective. The technology that built these vaccines are not new technologies. They weren't developed in the last year. They were developed many years before, but we've been able to adapt them for this virus, and it has proven to be highly effective. So on these data, we have the confidence to manage the pandemic now. We will continue to monitor. Everybody who's had the vaccine is monitored, through, and, and we look for side effects and any long-term effects, and we'll continue to do that. I think your second question was about um, something about the government and policy. I'm sorry. Healthy Lisa. options, why aren't they? Healthy promoting? options. Yeah. Yes. Remember, for, this is an infectious disease. And your healthy options are important to boost your immune system, but it's, it's and it's necessary, but it isn't sufficient to deal with this virus, right? So things that you can do, ensure that you, if you're overweight or uh, obese, lose weight, because that's one of the risk factors for having severe COVID and dying from the disease. If you have high blood pressure, diabetes, make sure it's well con controlled, get exercise and take your vitamin D, Every black person in this country should be taking vitamin D supplements because we don't have enough sunlight to generate the vitamin D. But those things do not take, the, are, are, are instead of your vaccine, it's alongside the vaccine, which is the most powerful and effective tool we have. Last one. Okay, just, 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 sorry, just one. There's one more about the, the, the question um, the boss lady asked was about, will it have an effect? How do we know it doesn't have an effect on protecting us from other um, viruses, yeah. other things. Yeah. That's a good question. Yeah, it, it is a very good question. As I said, the technology was developed before the pandemic. We've applied it to the coronavirus. We know it's effective against the coronavirus. We will continue to monitor in the months and years ahead to see if it has any additional benefits on any other viruses or or respiratory conditions. And sometimes well, you have to... Too or detrimental to as well. So we will monitor both to see what effects it can have. We did the same for the flu vaccine, Curtis. And over time, we learned that actually when you vaccinate children, you get an even 
bigger impact on controlling flu and that change policy. And that's because we monitored it over time. Okay, one specific question from Sassy. Sure. Her 84-year-old mm -hmm. mother, who has been double vaccinated, is coming over from Atlanta. Her and her sister have only had one dose. Will they be putting their mother at risk when she comes to live with them or stay with them? Okay. Now, in an ideal world, um, both of the sisters would have had their second doses of vaccines and at least two weeks before their mum arrives to have maximum protection. With mum arriving, I think I would really, and if they can't switch the dates and, they, you know, mum's going to arrive, I would encourage them to ensure that they continue to follow all of the prevention guides, so hands, face and space, social distancing, and that they get the lateral flow tests and that they test themselves regularly, just to make sure they're not carrying any infections or at risk uh, of 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 transmitting anything to their mum while she's here. So just, just be mindful about prevention because they've only had that one first dose and they may not have maximum protection just yet. Excellent. And also, if I could add to that, be mindful yeah. of the people you allow in the house because everybody's going to be excited to see mummy. And yes. you've got to yeah. be mindful of who's coming in your house and, and make them respect your rules, you know, because yeah. let her land, let her settle down. And yeah. if you live in East London, you are putting her at risk. But move to South, and <laughs> it, could all, it could all be. <laughs> okay. That, that, that's a great point. I remember when you're, for all of us, uh, when you're indoors, open those windows, mm. make sure there's good circulation in the house. So, because fresh air um, really yeah. helps to reduce the transmission inside. Great point. Yeah. Okay, um, boss lady, um, unless you've got a killer one, we're going to have to leave it there. Unless you've got one that's absolutely... Uh, no, it's useful. fine. I'm, I'm searching for them. They're coming in. But if I get anything more specific, thank yeah, you for um, your well, question. Yeah. Um, so, so just before you I go... just want to say thank you so much for coming on. Eddie Nestor holds you in such regard. Oh. I, I understand today for the first time ever, we had a wash. And that's because of you. So thank you so much. Wow. So I've, I've just got one coming in. What are the key side effects to having the vaccine? Um, so the short term immediate side effects, some people uh, say they feel a bit fluy, they may have headaches, they may have a little bit of pain at the jab site. Um, and for some people, you know, it's just a bit wobbly for the first 24 hours. And But in general, for 99% of people, that goes away. You take a paracetamol or Panadol, get some rest. By the time you sleep overnight, you'll feel better. In a very small percentage of people, they may have much more of that sort of fever chills after the first dose. But again, that tends to go away with simple paracetamol and rest. Um, these vaccines are so effective. And I really, you know, the, these features you see with all vaccines, but I really would encourage you, if you haven't had your second dose yet, because there are a lot of over 40s who haven't had their second dose, please get them. Um, it's much easier the second time around and I, I had both of mine already a, a while ago and and the second time is even easier than the first right so a, a couple of quick fire questions thank you by the way um mm -hmm. guys um curtis i think um is there a website that you would like to point people in um uh, uh, you know in the position of in the direction of Definitely. Um, for any information you want on uh, coronavirus, remember just to go to the gov.uk uh, coronavirus site. Eddie, you and I have spoken about mental health uh, before, and you know I really, really want to. You know, we didn't get a chance to talk about it today, but Thrive London. That's www Thrive. LDN has really good resources for mental health and good thinking also. Uh, good dash thinking also has really good online resources for young people, for parents and carers. If you're struggling with sleep, anxiety, depression, or stress, we have fabulous online tools linked to the NHS for every Londoner. So I would encourage people to go there as well. So um, those are, are two, three things. Eddie, for, for us today. Yeah, we've we done a lot on, on health. In fact, our last series mm -hmm. uh, was sponsored by the African Caribbean Leukemia Trust. And, you know, it's just fabulous to deal with that. But mental health is, I think, for a lot of the things that we see on, on websites, on WhatsApp and whatever, it's like we live in trauma. Uh, I think that's a really good point. Yeah. Two quick fun questions for you. You right? When's the last time you had rice and peas? Um, uh, a 
couple of weeks it's ago. Not, there's it's a going, really it's not it's doing well. When you start answering a question like that, if I'd asked you that first, I might have had to cut you off. I'm uh, I, I, I not an answer to that. Yeah, because I cook all the time, and you know how you know. You cook, cook that shit every week. Oh, no, 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 no. That no. I reserve that for when I go home to Jamaica. Otherwise, yeah. I'll all have right. your yeah, rice and peas is a treat, a good treat. A yeah, treat. Yeah. <laughs> yes, man. Okay. Um. Are you still hugging people when they ah oh, Professor Kevin Fenton? You haven't seen him in a year. They come to hug. Yeah, are you with that? Uh, only if they're close friends. It's funny because I've started going out again to the bars and 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 uh, not clubbing yet, but certainly to bars and restaurants and so forth. And you know that when you meet somebody you haven't seen for a while, you you don't know how you lean in and then you shake yeah. hands or you it's yeah, kind of right. awkward. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, now I think most of my social circle are vaccinated. I'm vaccinated and we all get tested regularly because we're going into the office and we're working. So, um, yeah, I have no problems uh, hugging those in my close yeah. circle. Well, and the very last question is, and this will tell us a lot about you. Are you going on holiday this year? I am. I am. You remember I said to you earlier this year that I have booked a holiday and I, do. I don't know if it's going to take place with all of the restrictions, but with things easing up and improving and with everybody now getting the vaccine, I'm going to try and take full advantage of it. So I still may cancel it depending on what happens, but okay. just a couple more weeks left. Listen, sir, uh, what Curtis said is absolutely right. For you to come on on a platform like this, where most of the people, if I'm honest with you, will be incredibly hostile uh, to what you're proposing, what you're talking about, uh, tells me a lot about you as a person, as a character. And I thank you, sir, because hopefully people will be able to take something away, go onto one of yeah. those websites, argue with Donna, whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. But at least it will be something, because as long as we keep talking, we're doing all right. So, yeah. Professor Kevin Fenton, Regional Head of Public Health England, yeah. thank Thank you so much. God bless you, sir. God bless You're you. Thank you. Take Thank care, you. everybody. Bye, Thank Donna. You. Bye, Curtis. Take care. Bye, man. Well done. Well done, Eddie. That was informative. Boss lady. Um, I don't know. Donna, talk to me. There's no, you know, you're not going to sit there with your long face. I'll get that in my house. I don't need that with you as well. What, what's, well, what's I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm, I'm just saying, like, he's a public health professional. I I've never seen him come out to talk about knife crime. That's also a public health issue. This is what I'm saying. We pick and choose the things that we want our people no, to do. No, no, that's no, oh. it, that's me. That's on me. Because when he comes on to talk to me on on the BBC, when I have what, what listen, he's let me just explain to you the way it works, right? The people that we've hired on no joke, the topper topper people who you think, how do you get them? Are people that I know. The people that you have to go through the firewall for, I can't get. I had to go for a firewall, but because I've spoken to him so many times on the radio, I've talked to him, as he said there, I'm massive on mental health because I know about my own and I know I see too much black man walking and black guys who show uh, mental health challenges get double the dose because they're potentially violent. I've seen it all my life. So I've talked to him a lot about mental health and knife crime. So I, I take I take that one on board. But I'm asking you to speak specifically to the issue of the high percentage of black people who are reluctant to take that vaccine. Well, I still haven't taken man's. Why? It is what it is. I, d I don't... People die every day, in it? So, for me, it's not even... I can't say that I'm I'm anti. I can't say that I'm for. I just haven't done it yet, and it doesn't bother me. I think if my work was affected, anything to do with me and money, there would be a problem. But my most of my work is online, so it doesn't bother me. I'm not out there in this. I know that my my work doesn't mean I come into contact with people uh, all too often. I can deliver the service online. Um, I think that I'm I think not the sorry, Donna. This is coming across wrong. Okay. You may sorry. Let me just because I want to be clear up that I have been in the past. You make whatever decision you want. You are a big woman and you make the decision that you think is right for you and your family. I, I'm not questioning that. I no, I think the view in the I was coming to the I'm, view in the I, community. I'm not, I'm not, no, I'm not questioning that. I'm not questioning okay. anybody. Anybody can do what they want to know. I, I don't, we've never come on here. I don't think I told anybody how to live their lives. No. We'll come on and put things out there. My question speaks to one issue alone is if you have him on, why not ask no. him a question? Oh, you're upset with because I. Because I'm not I, upset. I'm not upset. Sorry, I'm no, upset because I did, no, because I. You're didn't, BBC, Curtis. <laughs> I didn't have a question to ask him. Okay, that's fair enough then. Right, boss lady. Right. Um, should we I mean, tell him? Sorry. 
I mean, it just goes to show Donna is not alone from the comments. There are many, many people from the comments who are just refusing to have it. And some people even jo see even joking about where you can buy a vaccine passport. So, you know, it just, <laughs> I wasn't going to put that to him, but yes. No, he knows the environment he's coming into. I'm just explaining oh. to Donna about the firewall. The firewall didn't want to let him anywhere near no joke. Because for me, do you know, Eddie, I've attended about, what, three different seminars with people like him from other countries talking about it. I've been on platforms and been a guest panellist. I think I know everything there is to know. I'm just saying, man, I want it. That's right. I don't think there's any more information um, Dr. Fenton would have given me that would, oh, that's made me think, no. I'm just, that's you. I'm, that's you. Um, yeah. That's you. Right? And I, I think but, the important thing about the vaccine... People, Eddie, so and a lot of people, a lot of people feel the same. You can't disprove a negative, Curtis. I know that, I've had two. I've had double shots, man, so I don't know. You can't talk to me. You've only had one. Yeah? So I've had this boat. <laughs> this, this the don't high, get on high your, of, the high don't get on your miniature pony on me. <laughs> I am going to make fat jokes now. Yeah, yeah go for it. it. People could cuss me as much as they want. <laughs> big, big old... Sure. You get me, there. You said anybody overweight or obese. That's a horrible word. Should have the, the shots because you're more on YouTube. I'm here with my mom. That was my motivation. I have my reasons for having both, and I, I just gone for it. Okay. I drink, I smoke a, a little bit, and and you know suddenly hearing people telling me their body is a temple, it, it sounds ridiculous to me. It sounds ridiculous when I walk through Brooklyn. You see most of the people telling me they're not having it. I'm not having it. We have them. To, they will kill you. They, they are the local crackheads in the district, and they're telling yeah. me they're protecting their body. And that's where it becomes ridiculous. Okay, hold on, hold on. No. I've got I'm another finished. professor run, run, and you lot are making me laugh. And this is a serious show. Boss lady, have you got anything that's coming that we haven't done yet before I'm um, doing it? We need to tell them about a couple of events, don't we? Or yes. a boat dance. We have this event next Saturday on a boat. It's Wear Something White and Bright. Here it is. Eddie will be there wearing something white. <laughs> if I can find bright, it, it? <laughs> there it is. White yeah. and bright. Next Saturday, uh, free so night. Really on a boat party. It's really good because there's going to be an inside and an outside area, so people won't be packed Who's together. The DJs? Technically, it's a boat bus lady. M mastermind Frankie oh! and Frankie T Too Sweet are, are, are going to be there. Uh, so definitely, definitely. Uh, so check uh, out. So this is an old foot dance, then. No. Why no, I'll be there. It's Frank, Frankie Beverly and Frankie Two Sweet old foot. Are they old foot? They're not old foot. All right, you're no. the fix because you have a half ain't there. When, <laughs> he, out... when he gets vaccinated, we'll put him on the bill. <laughs> check out. Go to threenest.com to purchase your tickets. There's only a few left. It's almost sold out. So please, if you fancy shaking a leg, wear something white. Freeness.com. Curtis won't be there, but Robbie will. I'll be there, man. Right. So, look, let's get. Look, I've kept him waiting too long. Thank I can't you. Do that. Bye, bye bye, boss lady. Um, this guy is uh, uh, one of the leading academics of our time. Um, if you still have points to make to or about Professor Kevin Fenton or about our conversation, I mean, all of us, the great thing about us is that we're all ignorant, three of us, and we will put clothes on our argument. So, um, don't we've got thick skin so don't worry about that but it's lovely to have the conversation my only point is when we don't talk um so here, here this guy um i know he went into hackney but he went in after i left i think and helped to turn them around uh he's um he's he's gone he's gone to manchester now i think that's where he spends most of his time i know he came here in 1964 uh he predicted the rights but um uh, he was also part of um, uh, a TV show that we saw, which I thought was one of the best depictions of what our life was like. I absolutely loved Uprising. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw it, but it, it was one of the first times I thought, wow, that's us. That's that's true. That's authentic in a way that, with all due respect to Small Axe, it was very, very good. But, you know, um, it wasn't that. And that was mm -hmm. that. But also... Um, we had um, Subnormal, and he was part of that too. And he's had a big part to to, to play in it. I've got a video, but I'll play it after. I've kept him waiting long enough. Uh, yeah. Professor Gus, John, welcome uh, to Hashtag No Joke. Thanks, Eddie. Good to be with you. 
Thank you. I mean, look, I, I, I know you have never been short of a word and an opinion about anything. My ambition is actually to catch you in a Grenadian rum shop, because then I think we could properly go for it. What's your thought? All day and all night. Oh, exactly. <laughs> I would have to, I know I'm a young gun. I'd have to pace myself, Professor. But um, might, might I ask you, broadly speaking, uh, to give your view on what you've just spent the last 25 minutes watching? Um, well, first of all, I could understand the skepticism of um, communities, black or any other color, about, about, about um, this vaccine, because um, it all happened rather suddenly. I mean, we told that they've been working on it forever. And the question that that leads me to ask is why? Why did people assume we would have a pandemic requiring that amount of scientific intervention? Um, so I begin to smell a rat when people talk about that. Uh, and we know, as certainly as far as black people are concerned, that for too long, um, people have, have um, experimented uh with 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 black people's lives to test all kinds of stuff including sending things to africa that they would not test in europe in other words black people especially the poor are seen as more dispensable than everybody else so against that background it would be it would be a uh, uh, peculiar um and surprising if there were not amongst um african people on the continent or in the diaspora, some skepticism about 100%. this stuff that's coming from uh, the West and Europe, particularly. Yes, I mean, I mean that 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 is an absolute fact. Uh, do you mind if I ask what you've decided personally? Uh, Say again. Do what I am going to ask. Do you mind if I ask uh, what you decided very personally clear. in relation to myself? Yes. Well, I mean, that's ask, That's like asking me the color of my pee, man. Yeah, man. And the, 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 answer to that, the answer to that is that it's straw colored. <laughs> Do with that what you will, Eddie. Uh, I knew it was a mistake, you know. I knew you're gonna. It's just gonna be a fight, isn't it? Oh, no, no, no. no. Can I, can I, it, it is. It's a great answer, by the way. Let me just say. So, Professor. Um, yes, sir. I've I've been following you for quite some time, and I've been interviewing for you for well over a decade now. I, I, or everything that was in subnormal made sense to me, and it it still hurt me. Did it hurt you doing the research for it? Well, I was involved in that long before Steve McQueen and uh, um, Letania and, and, and others decided to do this program, as you may know. My first encounter with uh, the whole educationally subnormal uh, crisis, as I see it, was in the middle 1960s in Oxford. Um, I was training to be a priest. I was studying theology um, and working with the African Caribbean community in East Oxford. You will remember the, the Morris and Austin car plants that used to make these wonderful cars, Morris, Oxford, Austin, Cambridge, and so on and so forth. I, I was a proud owner of one of them in the late 1960s. So the, the men, the Caribbean men, worked in the in the car factory. The women worked um, typically in the Churchill or Radcliffe um, University hospitals. Their children went to Oxford schools. Many of those children were coming to join them after having been left uh, with grandparents or aunties or godmothers or whatever in the Caribbean. And the schools were treating them abysmally. So even as I was studying theology, I was going into schools and doing battle with head teachers about why they were determining that those children were imbeciles and could not learn and should be sent to ESN schools. They were making no distinctions at that time between, for example, children who had dyslexia, children who had dyspraxia. They weren't, they weren't testing them for those things. And it was all because 
the, their platform, the, the baseline, was some nonsense about genetics and eugenics oh. and, and the, the, the relationship between race and intelligence. So, so it was really, for me, my starting point was the middle 1960s and schools in Oxford that was messing up black children of car workers and hospital workers. I think, you know, for me, one of the things that we don't talk about enough is class, because when I speak to people who had dyspraxia, who have dyslexia, who have, there, there are all sorts of reasons that we partition people. And absolutely, th that was fabulous. And we're going to wash, because clearly you could do a whole hour here on... Um, <laughs> hashtag no no because we hang on your words sir it's 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 like listening to a real og talk about what you've seen what you know and one of the things we've learned on this show is to listen you know even though it doesn't sound like it sometimes in terms then of um by the way i don't agree with those who say you talk too much at all so, <laughs> Yes! Now, what, what, he noticed, what he's trying to do is so division. You see how he gave me a little slap? Now he's giving you, Donna, yours is next. I know, I know, he doesn't care. That's two, that's two he's giving you, Eddie. He doesn't agree with people who say you talk too much, but continue your 10 minute question. Yes, okay. Yeah, I'll continue. Yeah. Um, <laughs> up, up, right, uprising. I did yeah. think. It was now I know people who were there. Uh, you know, we featured it on the show 40 years. I, I mean, that fire was something, and it will be a scar on London, uh, on London for quite some time to come, won't it? On, on the country, not just London, you know? Because when I, when, when I say on the country, you, know, you will remember one of the comments I made during the program is that Britain as a country did not own that tragedy, okay? And I mean that because it was seen as if it had nothing to do with the rest of us. It was these blacks and their noisy parties and they're out of control and they do not follow our, our, our laws and what have you. That, that was the attitude. And the media particularly were absolutely disgusting when it came to that tragedy. It is as if the grief of those parents and, and, and bereaved relatives and so on did not matter. And, and it was inhuman the way the country dealt with, 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 with the tragedy. From the Queen at Buckingham Palace to Margaret Thatcher, William Whitelaw, and all of those wretched people. It was bad. I think that, um, and you know, we had this, and of course it was 13 and then a 14 died. Yes. It led, it led to the day of action, the day of demonstration. I think that when we watched what they said and what they did for, I think there was a, a disco fire or whatever in Ireland and the reaction, the difference between Margaret Thatcher, Her Majesty the sure, Queen sure. And, and what and what they uh, did. I, I wonder though, a lot about trauma and it's a broad question before we speak get specific with the anniversary we're, which we're in of those uprisings in 2011. Do, do, do you think that sometimes we live in trauma and is there any way that we can get out of it? How do you chill out? What do you do? Because you talk about trauma a lot. Well, <clears throat> frankly, the only part of Britain I love is the countryside. Um, I do not like cities, although I've lived in London, Manchester, Oxford, Leicester, God knows where. Um, so I go walking in hills a lot. I love the English countryside. I used to live in Manchester. I'm now in Cardiff. And I, worked a I walked a lot in the Peak District and those places. And indeed, being in Manchester, I was near to North Wales. So I and my children came regularly to Snowdonia and, 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 and those places. And um, that I found... That I found uh, energizing, partly because I'm a little village boy from Concord in the glorious Grenada, and my family worked land in hills. We were in the Concord Mountains. The plantation owners and those people who enslaved my ancestors commandeered the flatlands, and they, they gave parcels of land to our elders up in the hills. So as a young boy, I was walking four miles 
from the village up into the Concord Mountains in order to plant stuff, help my parents in the land, and so on and so forth. I so I have, I have a love for for hills and for for That's for the good. countryside. And um, I used to cycle a lot. Um, there are too many mad-ass people driving around yeah. these days. Yeah. So I don't cycle as much. You don't, and, and you don't have an e-scooter? No, no, absolutely not. <laughs> no, no, no. I nearly got knocked by one of those things. I was going to kill the fellow. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> I avoid them myself, right? Um, so I walk. I walk. I love walking. Um, I don't like team sports, but I, 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 used, to, I used to cycle... When I was the director of education in Hackney, and prior to that in um, assistant education officer at County Hall with the Inner London Education Authority, yeah. I didn't use the the uh, the staff car, um, which we wish could have taken me everywhere. I cycled. I cycled from Waterloo to Thameside, from Waterloo to Hackney, from Waterloo to wherever. Um, that's why you look Actually, so fit now. Say again? That's why you look so fit now. How, how old are you? I, I am 76 years old. Jesus. Uh, in, in terms of, and, and I've I got to say thank you for what you did for Hackney's education system, because when I went to school there, geez, I think, you know, I went to Upton House, right? Oh, and, God, yes. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it was bad, right? Um but let, let's let's bring it forward. Let's let's bring it forward to 2011. And when I sat at home one day and I heard you on the radio, and you were saying, "Look, you know, with the with the cuts that there are, it could be really, really bad." I, I've seen some of the cuts in terms of the youth workers, the young people's facilities. It was really bad. Where were you when you first heard about the actual? killing of of Mark Duggan and the ensuing uprising? I was in Leeds. <clears throat> I was in Leeds um, at uh, 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 an event at an Anglican church, St. Aidan's Church in Chapeltown or, or, or Moortown or somewhere. And um, <clears throat> I was doing a talk. And this is then during the talk that somebody rang and when I went out to answer the phone, uh, uh, to return the phone call, I was told about this shooting and, and uh, the events that, that actually followed it. Um, but it didn't surprise me, you know, because on the 4th of July, to be precise, I had written to Theresa May as Home Secretary saying that we needed to do something about the regularity with which young black people were killing themselves, either with guns or knives or whatever else it may be, that it was something which you could not simply solve by law and order. There needed to be conversations, particularly amongst the black community itself, about those matters. Um, and, and, you know, I, I, wrote a, I wrote a long letter to her giving examples of what it is that I, that, that I was talking about and saying that the extension of police stop and search powers using Section 60, which meant that you could close down a whole area, put it under siege and, and do a kind of Swamp 81 type policing. So you stop every young black person that you see and uh, you don't have any need to demonstrate that you've got some suspicion about it, that that was alienating, it was oppressive, and it would lead to people resisting that kind of oppression. Which so is what we saw with the vagrancy laws in 1981. Precisely. It was, it was the same as, as the, the SUS laws, yes. Using a, the Vagrancy Act of 1824, uh, to legitimize what the police were doing to black young people on the streets. But, you know, that was, 19, that was 1981, and, and in the period leading to 1981. For me, however, it started much earlier. The first job I did after, well, it's, it wasn't the first job, it was the second job. When I, when I finished doing theology, my first job was as, as a grave digger 
in Chiswick Cemetery. And, and you know, I, I enjoyed grave digging. I, I used to put people down there with, with, with panache. Um, <laughs> but, but the, and, and I used to work at youth clubs in Notting Hill, the Metro. Some people would remember the Metro Youth Club, um, the Cryptic One Youth Club and so on. And it is there that I was discovered by a woman who was on the one of the trustees of the Rennie Me Trust. And they asked me to go to Hansworth to do some work amongst young people in Hansworth. It was the same. There was a nasty police station in Hansworth off Soho Road called Thornhill Road Police Thornhill Station. Thornhill Road, yeah. It, it, listen, they were wicked, you know? No, so, we had our one. Stokey, Stokey Police Station yes, is yes, the one. Yes. We, 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 had, we had the equivalent of them, Lavender Hill, Stoke Newington, um, um, Brixton, uh, Thornhill Road. They were all over the place. So the, the, the state had declared war on young black people ever since that period. People tend to forget that. Mm. So you come, you come to 1976 and the blowout at the Notting Hill Carnival, and people believe that that came from nowhere. It's just these mad black young people trying to make problems for the police. Then you come to 1981 and Swamp 81 and all of that stuff in Brixton. And then you come to 85 in Tottenham, etc. So 2011 had a long gestation period. It had been going on since the middle 1960s. But because the state blinds itself oh. to the oppressions that black young people were suffering then, they then determine to look at each of these events as if they're happening for the first time. Definitely. <coughs> on, on, on that, let me stop you there because I know you've been, because I asked whether you've been, and I, I'm, I'm pretty sure you know Stafford Scott very well. Very well, uh, yes. Uh, uh, and I, I, that's Stafford there. You can't see him properly, but he's with a picture of his mum. I'll tell that's you right. something that he told me about that picture in a little while. But here is an exhibition I went to at the Institute of Contemporary Arts uh, in the heart of London. I mean, this is, you can't get more central, can you, Professor? I mean, yeah. it's literally on the mile. And he wonderfully, brings together from the 60s, he does it decade by decade, the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, and he explains all that you're talking about in how it came together, sure, what sure, the plan sure. was, what the reaction, and I'm quoting <clears throat> you a lot now, wherever there is a system of oppression, you can finish it, Professor, because it's your quote I'm stealing. <laughs> wherever there's a system of oppression, expect a system of resistance. I mean, full stop, you know, what are you talking about, about, about Belarus or Moscow or uh, what's in America or New York or Minnesota, whatever? Cultures of oppression breed cultures of resistance. And the resistance is righteous, you know? That's why, that's why all the nonsense that Sadiq Javid and Kemi Badenoch and all of these benighted people talk about, about, about Black Lives Matter is such foolishness. Yeah, it's, it's, it's righteous resistance. Or else what you're saying to people is lay down, be quiet, and let and us kick you about. Shut up, shut up and dance. Exactly. That, that, shut up that, and die. Shut, shut up, Precisely. shut up and yes. Um, look, I've got to say thank you. I mean, it's an honor for me to have you with us on this platform because it's different to the BBC. It's where we, you speak the same wherever you are, um, but it's lovely to be able to have a, a kind of contingent audience uh, who are listening. Would you just like to take this opportunity to like me uh, recommend that people go to this exhibition? Cause here he is, this is a, a giant picture of his mum, And he told me that he had to teach his mum about racism because with all due respect to you, professor, Many of your generation, of which my mother is one, go to school. If anything happened, they would pick that up person's point of view ahead of yours. Something happened at school. What did you do wrong? 
and it was it was our experience, which was we're not you, mum. We can't live your life. We don't take that kind of thing. That he had to explain to his mother, and it's just some lovely stories there. I just give you the opportunity to advocate for 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 that particular exhibition, also. Well, I ha <clears throat> I had the privilege not only uh, at, of being at the opening of the exhibition, but of speaking at it at at uh, Stafford's request. Um, it is a fantastic exhibition. It tells a, a whole lot of British social history since the Second World War and, and, and our part in it. Um, on the 14th, that's next Saturday, I will be at that exhibition at the ICA talking about the film Subnormal and some of the things that I've been sharing with you today. So do come along, everybody. Um, Where is it? Be clear for us. It, it's at the ICA in the mall. The same. Right. The same when place. is it? It's next Saturday, Saturday. Um, uh, the fourteenth. Yeah. Um, and it <clears throat> it it is it is a hugely important intervention that Stafford and they have made to mark the the thirtieth uh, anniversary of the killing of Mark Duggan. And the uprisings that 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 followed. The tenth anniversary of killing of Mark Duggan. That's two thousand two thousand and eleven, wasn't it? Two thousand yes, yes, two thousand yes. eleven. Yeah, 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 yeah. Listen, so can I say thank you again? I really appreciate. I've never said thank you so much in a show ever, but I, I'm only going to get rid of you so that I can fight and beat up Donna and Curtis because that's what that's what they're here as a beating stick. I don't know if you have such a thing in Grenada. When's the last time you went back to Grenada? I hope they're managing to keep you under control. Yeah, you know, I, you know, I have to say, I admire, the, I admire the first lady. You would, you would be a worse character. Without her, I promise don't, you. Don't make her head any bigger, please. Please, please. she's well already said, she, well she's said, already too. bad enough. I look at her; she's already bad enough. God bless Thank you. you so much. Thank uh, we'll you. Talk, we'll reason again very soon. Thank you absolutely, so much. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Bye bye. That's, that, bye bye. bye, -bye. See, that, that's um, Professor uh, Gus Gus John there. I mean, Donna, you must you must have followed him and seen his stuff before, Professor John. I, I had the pleasure of having a two-hour conversation with him once. Um, when something happened to him in Croydon, I don't know why. I just saw, I read an article online and it had his name and I found him and it rang the number. He's an absolute legend. Somebody, you know, like a Socrates, I could honestly just yeah. sit at that man's seat and listen nonstop, full of so much that we need now. And for a person like myself, you know that we did the community book club version of so, the book, book from Subnormal. Yes, you know, I, do. I, I yeah. need like, you. we don't want those people to ever go away because... As we talk about, we stand on the shoulders of giants. Like literally, the words that come out of that man's mouth would feed life into the projects that I tried to run here in Croydon. It, it, and, and it's words that parents and the community need to hear. That you know, we, we it's happened before. It's going to happen again. And we need yeah. to be on our game in terms of how we build resilience and protect our young people and ourselves as a community. Yeah, we've got tough times coming because you know he mm. talked about the Vagrancy Act there. The killing yeah. of Mark Duggan, and and if you look into that, you find that two days had passed, and no one had gone to tell his parents what happened to their child, and you now see that you know Boris Johnson has brought in a crime bill which determines that you will see more of stop and search uh, coming very soon. Now, whilst I have dedicated all my time off work to um, the fact that young black men, particularly, are killing each other alienating a whole group of people doesn't seem to me that, to be a particularly um, intelligent way of trying to tackle it, particularly when we've seen it fail before. But but let's just wait and see. Um, boss lady, how are you? Apparently I need an award. Yes, <laughs> man. You, you know I've been saying it from my head. You need a piece of chicken. You know what your award should be? A piece of chicken. A piece of chicken. <laughs> no, not for me. <laughs> but anyway, just to say there is so much love for Professor Gus John in the comments. Mm. People are saying you could just have a show with just him. They've just loved speaking yeah. to him, his truth, his honesty, his real talk. And many people are now going to go away and check the colour of their pee when they leave this show. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't that a great answer? That's true. Yeah. <laughs> ah, yeah, it's a great listen. They loved it. 
Yeah, he's got a lovely voice. He's got a lovely um, voice as well. Carmen. Now, we're going to hear from Gina because, as I said, uh, Gina gave us a thing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to play it in three six-minute bits. And then what we're going to do is put your comments in and we'll have a chat about each section. Um, she talks about making money. She talks about um, leaving London, uh, encouraging other people to do it. And she also talks about uh, the freedom of telling everyone who and what she is. Uh, that's particularly interesting because I haven't heard that in that way uh, before. Boss Lady, let's tidy up. What's out there that we haven't um, um, talked about and played around with as of yet? Okay, you've got this one from Usain Bolt. Oh, yeah. Okay. Let's play that one. It's going to be tough. It's not going to be easy. But as long as you want it, you will get it if you work for it. And just following up on what Usain just said about the road, the road to success is not straight. There's a curve called failure, loops called confusion, speed bumps called friends, and red lights called enemies, caution signs called family, and flat tires called jobs. But if you have a spear called determination and an engine called perseverance with insurance called fate and the drive to make it, you'll reach a place called success. Jesus. Jesus. That's one of the greatest quotes of all time. Yo. Hey, yo. Are, you, are you serious? Are you kidding me? That guy spent time in Dominica. I can tell that because that is that's how we speak. No, 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 that's the talk, man. That's how we speak for the regular. Uh, how did you mark the independence, Curtis? You um, and Jack. Pretty much, but um, basically, just a celebration of um, us, really, as a people, and watching the um, Olympics. I don't know if you know, but the Olympics were on, and <laughs> Jamaica as a as a as, you know. It's not a big island. It's not a big island. Bigger yeah. than your island, but it's not a big island. But my goodness, what it has produced is amazing. And we celebrate what? that. Okay. We celebrate, okay. life. You know and we celebrate us all. They say, they say, little but Talawa. Little but Talawa. It's just amazing. My mum was so excited. She got a what, happened in, what happened in and 100 meters? Number two and number three never lost. Yeah. Like number one. Yeah. 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 What happened in 100 meters? Yeah. 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 I yeah, know, I there's that. that, but that's so Jamaican as well. It's like they didn't even want to big her up, man, because they're so competitive. They thought they had a shot. But anyway, we, 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 it's a part of it. There's love there, but you hold it down. You know what I mean? Have like you been Eugene, watching it, Connor? Have you been watching I, it? What's your moment what? from the Olympics? One moment. Um, Just the, like the athletics. I haven't really been watching it. I have. I found very oh, disjointed from sake. it. sake. Come on, for good. What, what have you been watching? Love Island. What have you been doing for the last six weeks, woman? If I tell you, the whole of your show popped down. So don't ask oh, me. Uh, all right, so I watched cool. Japan beat USA in baseball, which I found amazing. But Japan is big on baseball. But USA losing is one of my most enjoyable been... things. They don't know how to lose, really. But it's been good. Baseball. Japan beat USA in baseball. That was a big Big. Boss lady, what about you? What was your moment? Well, at first, I loved the skateboarding. I loved the BMX. I like that they're trying to attract younger people. My boys, we were watching that BMX and the skateboarding. But I did like, and I know she's American. It goes without saying the Jamaicans, but I did like Alison Felix picking up that bronze yeah. after having a baby, going through the trauma that she's gone through yeah. and, and meddling at so many Olympics. Proud of that woman. She's an inspiration. All right, Eddie, let me check your knowledge now. Um, there was a race, maybe a 10,000, where the lady dropped or got kicked over, got up, and won the race. Yeah, I saw that. Last lap of the 5,000 metres qualifier. Semi-finals, Hannah. Yeah, qualifier. She, Thank she won you, boss lady. Two, two golds, and, two golds and, a, and a bronze, didn't no, she? No, but she yeah. got Jesus. tripped over, Eddie. Picked yes. up herself, brushed herself down, and then you... ran like she was angry. You know when you're vexed? That emotion or, or, or in right your case, when you're hungry. That was yeah. amazing. That, amazing. Did you see the other person that dropped behind her went came about 10th? It showed you yeah. how amazing yeah. that woman was. Because she did the Definitely. tripping. You understand? She felt guilty. You can't <laughs> run with guilt. This is what I keep telling Eddie. You cannot run with bad mind. You cannot uh, do it. Yeah? Uh, but because you were the one that was tripped, that put you in the right place. You're the justified this, man. You tried to break me, you're not going to break me. That's you tried right. to she hurt said, me, you're not going to hurt me. Let me get she said, race. you're going to trip me up. Let me show you guys. Let me show you something. <laughs> right, right. Look, we're, 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 clearly, we're not going to be an hour show today. But 
There is a story that um, I think I sent to both of you. Before we go to Gina, right? Oh, this no. story, you know where I'm going, right? And Why I, I are you know... going there? I meant to text you back on that one, but go ahead with your, with your depressing self. Go on. <laughs> I don't think it's depressing. I think it needs to be spoken about. Well, speak. No, I'm waiting for Big Man to talk the thing. Big Man? Who? Right on he... your forehead. That's where it's going, guys. <laughs> right, right, right in the center of your forehead. Okay, so this story, I mean... When Boss Lady said it to me, I said, this is an old story, but it was a sentencing. The, the guilty verdict had been quite some time ago. It's a story that can only break your heart. If you're a parent and all of us here are here, you don't understand it. You don't begin to understand it. Effectively, a woman, a young woman has a child and goes out for her birthday for six days. Six days and leave her child. And yes, the child dies. And this was about six, six days. And this was about how do you sentence somebody who does something that cuts against your instinct as a parent? How do you sentence somebody that does something that's so horrible that you can't even understand it? Well, they have. Uh, they gave her nine years. But here's a guy, interestingly enough, who um, one year ago we were talking about because he decided to leave the BBC. He's kind of grown and developed and can speak his freedom since then. Here's Sideman's take on that uh, particular story. Happenings, everything about social media and the chasing of clout and the selling of dreams that we all do on here every day with our posts contributes to the mindset that will make someone value the party more than their parenting and value dressing up more than their duty. This situation is an extreme case, but I'm actually begging people that, that aren't mentally capable to stop having kids, you selfish lunatics. Like, or, Somehow we all think it's funny that most kids these days are accident babies, unplanned, unorganized for, and I've never gotten the joke. Why are we just out here creating whole humans for banter? No plan, just vibes. But are you equipped with giving that child proper care, proper time and tutelage? Or are you just throwing a person into the ecosystem to be burdened by the same characteristics that you have that drag you down every day? What do you have to offer your child in the way of stability, not just financially, but mentally? You know you're brought down and depressed daily and yet you're running to have a child. Why? To give them what? Happiness. You, you can't give them something that you don't possess. From what resource? When I hear some people having kids, I think to myself, what on earth? You have to hope that that child is going to come into contact with somebody with some semblance of substance because their parents defo don't have none. I think a lot of the next generation coming are set up to fail because they've been raised in the most silly of environments because we are the age of the party. We are the age of the rave over the responsibility. Case in point, Isaiah, who's gone now. Let's stop having kids we can't raise people, please. Peace. Ba -da -da -da. Quack, quack. It's such an interesting thing, you know. I mean, this guy's getting television Ooh. numbers, you know, 500,000 uh, views. And he, he, regardless of whether you agree with him or not, he speaks his truth. And there is an, an amazing freedom, which we're going to hear about from Gina in a little while. But Donna, let me come to you as a mum. I mean, she's 19. So for me, because I'm so old, 19 is like a child, right? But she can't be well. She can't be well done. And it's not the sort of thing that somebody who's well does. What do you think, Don? No, definitely. I mean, and reading the reports, you know, she was known to, to child social services herself for th abuses that had happened to her when she was young. And the child was, she was part of a, a child protection order. So there, were, there was already evidence to, to say to the statutory services, something is not right here. And I, and I know as well that the sheltered accommodation that she lived in is one where people or mothers who have young children, vulnerable mothers are placed. So it's already a kind of institution that should be watching over these mothers, these vulnerable mothers with these young children. So for me, I think there are a lot of red flags that were missed. I think this, I agree with everything he's, you know, I think there's two sides to this. There's a statutory failings. And there is also the question of speaking the truth. Why are people that are broken producing children? And, and if all the reasons that he said, it's almost like, you know, I've, I've dealt with young mothers who talk about, oh, but they look so cute and I want to get them a little gold chain. And oh, I love those little trainers. Actually, are we speaking to our children that you're making a human life or is it just a fashion uh, to, to have children? Exactly. If you're broken, what the hell do you have to give? 
these children. And it's something that I see in the community advocating for parents who haven't had it, who've not made that investment because they ain't got shit all to give. And yet they keep on having picnic. So I agree with him. And it's a conversation that we need to have. Are we speaking truth about the condition of some of our community? Talk the thing. I don't know, Kurt. I don't know. Um, oh, it's just, it's just uh, spot on, man. But you say, I don't know, um, Simon, but how eloquent, how fantastic was that speech? Whether you agree or not, the reality is we have a society that is the, it's the bling over the thing. You know, it's like I've got a young lady who lives a couple of roads from me, three children, young black girl. And one day she's, I could hear screaming coming out of her house, screaming. I'm in my front, just sweeping up a little bit, screaming. So I go, I knock the door. She's got three children, all under the age of, uh, I would say, six. So you go six to ten. Some morning, I went out, and I see her screaming. I knock the door. All right, there's no answer. A young lady comes down the road, white woman, and hears the screaming. And I say, no, she says to me, oh, should we, should we kick the door in? Now I'm a big black guy. I said, huh. I'm not kicking the door in, but I would love you to ring the bell and, and wave at the window if she looks out. I think she looked out and saw me and didn't want to open the door. The young lady rang the bell. The girl came down and had a conversation with this woman. Now, I've left the situation because I can see she's not comfortable with me. Gone shopping, come back. The two of them are still talking. That's maybe two hours later. They're still talking. So I've said, are you okay? Hello. I've, known, I've seen her for a while. I say good morning. She, some morning she says hello. Some morning she can't even look at me. Whatever. There are things going on with her mentally, but she has three children. And now from that point to this point, I keep an eye out. Right? Not that I could ever go in the home or anything, but I hear the children screaming. I ring the bell. I, I try and keep a kind of rapport with her. We have a generation, and let me bear this out, she's about 22 years old, 22 years old, Donna, and I think she's overwhelmed with the three children she has. I know social services are aware of her because I see them coming like maybe once every month or something like that, something happens. We have a society that the, the children that they're having, it's like people who get them little dogs that they can put in a bag and walk around with because it's easier than having a, a dog that is a bigger dog. They want it to be cute. They want to buy costumes for it and do little things with it. We have children, people, persons coming into this world. And I don't know who's, because we were raised, even if you weren't raised, it was, you, you, can, you can bring up picnic. No, 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 Eddie, don't shake it. You can bring up, children are a massive responsibility, right? a massive responsibility and it is hard no matter what life you're in it is so hard but Kate, i'm going to tell you the truth in our community when we're, when we're at, like our demographic on h and h is older than me yeah there's big people yeah. when you're asking the questions about do you talk to your children about sex about responsibility and all of those things people are not yeah. having those conversations and often the excuse is well we weren't talk nobody told us so we've yeah. not had those conversations with our children so you're right there are generations of people out there whose parents who's in whose nurturing environment is not preparing them for certain aspects of life and then again sometimes when the state gets involved they move these children i'm going to refer to them as children that are having mm. children away from any kind of support structure yeah now where was that we don't know. I haven't read the article, but I don't know where her family is. She must have aunts, you know, some kind of family structure. When they move these young women uh, to Newcastle, no, no, you're, 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 you're both getting me vexed now. What kind of, it doesn't matter where you move. You've left your child here for six days and gone. Yeah, what, 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 what was she doing? We know the situation, but what we're trying to address is how do you get to a point? As a parent, right. where you're comfortable leaving your child for three hours. Much right, right. She's, Listen, because she's, she's not a parent. Much she's is not a parent. Parent. What have we done as a society that we failed that? Same no. with knife crime. We're no. failing. And we need yes. to find out why we are failing. People, Young people. Let, people. Let, me, let me stop it there and get, give people an opportunity to come in. They might come in now. They might come in after. But let me just be minded before. I'm not going to kind of try and supersede anybody but to tell you that the other story that we missed that was on when we were off 
was a story of a home in Lambeth called Shirley Oaks. Now, if you want to look at that, you want to talk about children being in trouble at home, you take them and put them in a home and then mm. you want to see over 40 years what has happened to mm. them. And if you get a chance to listen to an interview I did with Linda Bellos, who was leader of the council for some time, I suggest you do that. So, look, it's get, you say don't talk about it, but it's life, Curtis. It's real and it hurt. When I read that story, you know, it was, you know you said at the beginning of this, please, God, don't make it be a black person. That's what I thought when I heard somebody left their child alone for six. Please, I don't mean it to be anybody and anybody's child, but that seemed particularly cruel to me. Right, um, boss lady, you can either, let's get started with Gina, or you can give us some of the comments which I can see are coming in on this one. It's okay. up to you, because you're in charge. Um, yeah. <laughs> Andrea says, hardest job in the world is to raise a, a child. Yvonne said, where is the support of her family and friends? Which is what a lot of people are saying. I'm sure I read up somewhere that she was, um, they didn't have a relationship from the age of 14. So it sounds like she had a difficult relationship with her parents. Many people are saying the system let her down, social services. Also, if she was staying in um, a, a supported accommodation, did nobody there hear the child crying or anything? like that did no one check up on it um some of the youngsters don't know how to be a parent because they need parenting themselves so many issues led to this baby dying and obviously that young mother was not in the right kind of mind to leave a baby for six days, six days. even those six that even though other people are saying well she was in the right mind to go and rave wherever <laughs> she raved she was 19 years old so she knew what she mm. was doing. So there's 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 lots of mixed feelings. Andrea's saying, where are the fathers? Where is the father of yeah, this? Well, well, um, good point. Great point. Um, baby. Because it, if it, it, um, it, I tell you what, it's hard when there's two of you. Far yeah. less for when there's just absolutely. one. Of you. Yeah. Absolutely. So, you know, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, great point. Look, and great point made. Where great point made. So Thank look, unless, unless we're going to be. Here with, did the father know she's going away for six days? Is there a communication going on between right. her does and he know the his, father? Does it's he know his child's question. name? Does he know his it's child's name? Do, do, you know, do you know when, when the birthday of the child is? You go there, Curtis. We'll come back with you. It's hard and it's horrible. And we've got some tough times coming, which is why I'm really sad that we're stopping. No joke. Chair, I've got it out of me now. I don't have to sit again. Right. Gina, we had the opportunity to interview a lady who was one of us and has told me <laughs> F off. <laughs> Literally. She was F one off. of us. <laughs> She was one of us. She told right. me F off for the last year. Every time Curtis has tried, but F off, he's ah, four o'clock in the morning. Talk it and, and, talk and, it and, and proper, proper too. So we arranged to have a little um, pre-record with her. Um, as I say, it was 58 minutes. We got it down to 18. Uh, but we've cut it into three six-minute bits. So we've got at least 20 minutes. Hopefully you can stay with us for that. Um, and then we're finished. Um, let, let's go with... Uh, number one. Number one was to do with leaving the country and doing things for yourself. Here's Gina. A lot, a lot of black celebrities are quiet. I know that they feel the same things that I do behind closed door, closed doors, but because their work is coming from other people, they feel like they haven't got the freedom to speak out publicly. So I'm doing that work in that. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to say what I'm going to say because when I was trying to play the game, it did nothing for me anyway. So I might as well just be who the hell I am anyway, because playing the game and trying to be all happy, smiley Gina, you know, jumping through hoops and trying to nip at that carrot did nothing for me. So that, I think in the last couple of years, that is a realization, an epiphany that I had. And I'm enjoying it immensely. A lot of comedians were horrible to me. They were bitchy, they were horrible, they were backstabby, they, they spread rumors about me. They were just awful. And it, but about a year in, I had an epiphany. I was like, oh, these guys are intimidated by me. Mm -hmm. Oh, let me give them something to be intimidated by. And after I had that epiphany, I stopped crying in my house about how everybody hated me. And I was like, oh, I'm going to give them something to hate. And I'm like, do or die. I do it. If I fail, at least I tried it. But I, I never want to spend my life wondering what if, what if I'd gone, what if I'd done it, where would I be right now? And I'd hate if someone else who was less talented me than me had gone and done and then blown up. And I was like, I could have done that. So yeah. I've always gone, you know what, I'm just going to do it and see what happens. And if I fail, I fail. If I succeed, I succeed. And I... 
shows. That is how people like Mo and Judy got on from making their own content online and building their own fan base. So you don't need to wait for the gatekeepers anymore. So make your own stuff. And uh, and if you have to, yes, go elsewhere and seek your fortune. I made my own stuff. All the, the two out of those three stand-up specials that you see on Netflix, I shot them myself. Um, I, I hired a theater, I hired a crew, I had my own director. I made those specials myself and then was selling them out the boot of my car like a rapper selling mixtapes. And then I ended up selling them to the networks and stuff in America. But I was like, I'm not waiting for you lot to give me special. You don't, you lot don't want to give me a special? I'm going to make my own damn special. I don't need your help. So it's all about doing for self. Do you think that, that, that people like Curtis should have left as well? Absolutely. Absolutely. I told Curtis years ago, come with me. You need to come, Curtis. Your talent is wasted in England. Thank you, Gina. I just don't have that kind of drive, man. I remember first meeting Gina, had that drive. It just yeah, you hated so me, apparent. Curtis. It's in the book, Curtis. I you How with, much a you passion, me? with a passion, you know? But I've always been very honest about that journey, you know, as I am. Our, our relationship was built on hatred. And that's my, if you see how I hated Eddie, for years I still do, you know? <laughs> It's just the way it is. But to constantly have that drive, that's never been me. I mean, in my career, remember, I took a hit that I didn't realise how hard that hit hurt me, you know, with me and Ishmael, and I took a hit, and it shook me, it rocked me, it rocked my uh, confidence a bit, you know? But we've all okay. taken hits, Curtis. You're conditioned to look at ambition as something dirty. That's as right. something that, like outward ambition is seen as oh gross she's too yeah. desperate she's too and i'm like no what's wrong with wanting to succeed and being open about wanting to succeed nothing wrong with that and that yeah my energy does suit america in that way because i was always openly like i want to be the best i want to be good at what i do and if i'm good at what i do then i want the re the, the the rewards that come with being the best at what i do And uh, people laughed at me when I left. They laughed, especially the white comics. They laughed their asses. And they used to talk about me behind my back. Oh, where's she going? All she talks about is being African. African jokes, what did she do? Uh, all of that stuff. <laughs> and now, <laughs> my African jokes have made me rich. <laughs> how rich, do you? That's financially, how are things now? I'm doing What's extremely, the... I'm doing extremely well. I'm getting a piece of the white boy pie in that I'm right. earning money that white guys have been earning for a long time. Like, I didn't realize, you know, I'm a comedian. I've always wanted to do live comedy. I didn't really care. I wanted to be successful, but I wanted to just be a comedian and maybe do a bit of TV and use the TV to sell tickets for my live show. But then I got this sitcom and I'm, I'm writing, I'm exec producing, and I'm seeing the power of being able to create stories rather than just being in front of the camera, being told what to say. I called Curtis for, for, to all these give me a hook up. I called Steve K. Amos. I called oh, Curtis, I all of these guys auditions for the show. Listen, I never I never forget where I came from. I I turned around and I was like, Curtis, I got this show coming. Get your Nigerian accent on point because <laughs> I'm going to audition for this show. <laughs> Eddie, I went to the audition, Eddie. I saw African actors, right, who I didn't know were African until I saw them in full regalia wearing their African tribes clothes at the audition. I phoned Jean. I said, what, were we supposed to dress in a certain costume? She goes, no. I saw people walking around fanning themselves with the tails of sheep. Bah, bah. Oh, right, Curtis? Yeah. What, what, what you do? You, 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 and then went what in. Happened, but, yes, hello, my friend. Yes? And then I did it. I've never been able to do it. I said to her, put in a West Indian guy or, 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 or something. Oh, I, he's African. And well, then Gina phoned me and cussed me back. You know, with the power, that the idea of Gina sitting down, watching me, or laughing on the video. Laughing I'm for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> la laughing for that is, I said, that's the power. You never you told me that, that Chris. Position, you never yeah. said that. You never told me that you auditioned for it. Listen, I called Eddie. Curtis first. Thank you, Gina. <laughs> I called Curtis first. I said, Curtis, I got a pilot. I 
I've got this show coming. This show <laughs> might be big. Let me <sighs> God, I love I'm you, Gina. You. Uh, Gina, you made my whole day. I'm going to live off this story. Listen, for that years. Audition, I still keep that audition when I'm feeling sad. That audition tape. <laughs> Anytime you're you upset you, down. Gina, draw for it. I, I'm like, <laughs> 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 I knew he was going to hold that one. My God, I was hoping that one didn't make the cut. <laughs> uh, I got, I got it. Hell yes. Wow. Kurt, Curtis, you went, you had a chance to be in this oh. award winning um, sitcom, sitcom and you, you, you messed it. You messed it. If I'm honest uh, with you, Kurt, you know, you know the bit of it, and Donna, maybe I don't know how you reacted because obviously that is that bit of it wasn't about us. Before we come to Boss Lady's comments, the bit of it that touched me was when you talked about now in retrospect how you look back and you can see the hit that you took, yeah, with, with Ishmael. I just for me, it touched my heart, and it, it I, I'll let you into something. It, it fed into a conversation that I had with Rob where, you know, for the first time in 30 years, we actually said, you know, brother, I don't know, I'd struggle to do it without you. And then when I heard that, I was like, whoa, you you just triggered me there, you know what I mean? And you're just, just lucky because partnerships, quite often marriages or working partnerships don't last a, as, as long do you want to? You don't have to, but because it was the bit that touched me, you want to elaborate on that, Curtis? Well, what, what people didn't understand, I suppose, at the time was me and Ishmael had known each other from three years old. We were three years old in nursery school um, in, in Ephra Primary School in, in Brixton when we first met. Three years old and off and on between the whole of our school lives. So that's from three till we, uh, Tulsa School, what are you, 16, 17? That was our relationship. So the comedy on top of that was like a real loving marriage, pretty much like you two have, Boss Lady and Eddie. It was full of love. And should <laughs> one, should one of you get hooked on something and the other one not fully understand it and not be at with, you know. So there was a lot of stuff going on with me back in the day. You've got to remember, those who don't, Kurt said this, we were kind of flying. We were doing really were well big. and everything was matching. falling into place. And yeah. when that break was hit, when that wall was hit, and it was like the association and everything, it just shook me to the core, man. And what I was, that is what the beauty of it is meeting up and coming artists like Gina, like, um, you know, Richard and Slim and all of those guys. You can impart a bit of knowledge on them whether they want to accept it or not is on them, but you have that ability to impart a bit, especially about this industry that we live in, especially about the hype and believing your own. Be yeah. very careful, you know? And um, when Gina talks, because you hang with her, there's an energy that comes off her that makes you feel lazy. No matter what you're doing, and I am extremely lazy, don't get me wrong, but no matter what you're doing, there's an energy about Gina that just really fuels you. As she leaves the room, you feel like, oh my God, I better go and tidy up the house. I better go and paint yeah. something. You know, it feels that busy. And that's why, even though she uses the word hate and I qualified, it was never hate. I've never hated anybody in my life. But Gina's energy did jar me in the beginning of our relationship. It was but, like but, oxygen but, coming but, out of the room, man. But, but that's where Donna came in. And Donna said, it, it, it is a British thing that you're, it's ugly. It's seen as... You know, you can't go on to a, a, a game show and say, well, I'm here to win because you're not going to get the votes from the people in the public. You have to go, yeah. well, look, I'm just going to try my rear, I'm going to try my best because... But you're going to try your like best what? for your, your mother who is sick. In, yes. You have to yeah. do that backstory. <laughs> Ambition yeah. is, 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 is ugly. Boss Lady, um, some of the thoughts that are coming in from episode number one. Well, they love Gina. Gina is the original D and I G and I adore her. Gina, no, Gina, D, D works as well. <laughs> love this woman, the legend Gina. Well done for taking the leap of faith. She had nothing to lose and gained so much. Mm -hmm. um, and many people are saying if you could upload the 50 minute um, version of the interview. Yeah, um, I am going and, to. Yeah, and they, they love how grounded she is. Also, many people are saying that they've bought her book. 
Yes. Cock handed. Cock handed. Cock handed. Cat. What did you just call it? <laughs> it's the way the put- no, 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 no. Often, often when we make these mistakes, our minds are thinking of other things. What did you call it? What, what, what handed was it? I called it cat, cat handed. So please. <laughs> Okay, okay. Please go and check out her book, Cat Handed. Many people have read it and they love it. So please. Just to tell them also, Lisa, that they don't have to buy the book. They if they've got audio books, because that's yes. how I'm listening to it. Yes. They can have you audio can... books as well. Audio Absolutely books. brilliant. Yeah, so please. Cat handed, okay? What is wrong with these two? Can you not behave yourself? It's it's very good. She it's just like said um... the word. That's all. Oh, shut up. <laughs> right. Can we get episode number two, uh, please? Of <laughs> Yes, we can. One of the things that we haven't dealt with on, on No Joke, which I'm really embarrassed about, is lupus. It's something that a lot of people suffer from. Just tell us a little bit about your lupus journey. Okay, so I was diagnosed with lupus in 2005. Um, I started to notice that I couldn't wait when I woke up in the morning, I couldn't open my eyes. That was what started the whole journey. And I, I got worried. I thought, what's wrong with my eyelids? Are my eyelids paralyzed? Is this what's happening? And what happened, the lupus, and I had a combination of lupus and Sjogren syndrome, which is what, is it, is it Serena that had it or Venus Williams? One of the sisters had it. But basically it attacked my tear ducts. So I wasn't producing tears. So when I was waking up in the morning, my eyes were so dry that my eyelids were stuck to my eyeballs and I couldn't open my eyes. So that was what started me on the journey to the doctor. Then I started to feel joint pain. My hands started to hurt, my knees started to hurt. So, I, you know, I started work researching it as you do. And it, I came up with either rheumatoid arthritis or lupus. I was like, one of these two, I did a lot of research. And I was like, well, I hope it's not rheumatoid arthritis because that destroys your joints after a while. They put you on all these drugs. And, so when I went into a rheumatologist, I was diagnosed with lupus and I was like, oh, well, I, well, I think I can work with this. I can work with this. Um, over a period of time, the symptoms got worse to the point where my hands were deformed. You know, when you get that deformation and you're not, like, you can still see there's a little bit of damage to my knuckles and stuff where my skin, where the, my knuckles swelled up, my joints, I, I couldn't walk properly. I had a raised toilet seat in my house. I had all of that. I was pretty much good. You didn't know because when I went out to perform, dosed myself up with drugs and steroids to get on the stage. And then I'd come home and just be like that. But so nobody really knew what was going on. But yeah, I had, a, I couldn't open bottles because my hands were so swollen. My arthritis got so bad that I couldn't open bottles and cans and things. I had a contraption to open bottles because I couldn't, my hands were like this. Um, horrible migraines, arthritis, dry eyes, all of that kind of stuff. And uh, they were putting, they, the doctors were like, t you know, all the drugs, steroids, you know, prednisone, all this. And at one point, the doctors were like, you know what, we, it's getting worse and worse. We don't, we don't quite know what to do. We're thinking of maybe giving you chemotherapy, which is what we use for cancer patients, but it will blast your whole immune system and maybe we can start again. And that's when I was like, oh no, this, they, 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 they experiment on me like a guinea pig. I've got to find a way out of this. In the meantime, I watched a TV called, show called Celebrity Detox. Uh, it was on years ago and I remember it was Kim Wilde, that pop star from the eighties, Richard Blackwood, one of the hairy ones from Boy Zone and someone else were all taken to Thailand where they do a fast for seven days with colonic irrigations and stuff. And at the end of it, now at the time I was like, I'm gonna say 15 and a half stone at this point uh, from, the, from the drugs, the steroids they were giving me because they make you blow up. And I ate, ate like a pig too. So a combination of the two. And um, so I saw this TV show where Richard Blackwood and all them guys went to Thailand and they do colonics and, 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 and fast for a week, like no food, just liquids for a week. Richard didn't take it seriously. Him and the boys on go, guy kept sneaking out and buying burgers on the street and then sneaking back in. But Kim Wilde stuck to it. And I mem never forget that at the end of the week, the, the voiceover said Kim Wilde had problems with what have some health issues and they disappeared after the week and she lost a stone in a week. And I was like, huh? I went online and booked myself 
into that same resort the same night I watched the show. I was like on the computer. So I went to this resort, did the same detox, also lost the stone in a week. And that's where I discovered that food is medicine. I, I came back, it took me a few years to get it into my head, but a few years later, I kept going back every year and doing this detox and sorting out my health. And I went raw vegan. So food is medicine. I cut out meat. I cut out dairy. I cut out all processed foods. And I went raw vegan for about six months. And I'll tell you what, within weeks of completely changing the way I eat, all the inflammation in my body went down, like all of it. I was able to throw out that raised toilet seat. My joints got better. I got healthier. I lost a load of weight because I was eating healthier. But the most important thing is I came off all the medication. The doctors were like, you can't come off that medication. It will kill you. Your body will go into shock. <clears throat> and I was like, this medication is not healing me. All it does is manage the symptoms. You're not trying to get to the root of why my body is now reacting against me and, and attacking good tissue. All you're doing is giving me painkillers and stuff to, to mute the, the symptoms, but you're not actually trying to find the root cause. I'm trying to find the root cause and I can't find it while taking your drugs. I came off all the medication and, and, and used food as my medicine. That was in 2009. It's now 2021. I've not been on any medication for lupus since then. And I've managed my health with just my food. Food is medicine, people. There you have it. <clears throat> food is uh, medicine. And um, it's quite interesting, isn't it? With, with Boss Lady on, I think you're best suited to, to answer those points. I don't think the three of us really have a word to say on anything she said there. Safe to say, you know, I've heard you talk a lot about the fact that, you know, here we manage symptoms. We don't seek out the cure. You just manage what's there as opposed to finding out what causes it, swimming upstream and finding out what caused the problem. Yeah, I mean, it's great. Gina is a great example of how diet can change anything you have. I always say I go to the do doctors for a diagnosis. I don't go to a doctor's for any medication. I find out what's wrong and then I will go and do my own research, change my diet. I'm always one for drinking more water, eating more greens, getting more sleep. Gina's story is fantastic and I wish she could tell more and more people that changing your diet definitely impacts your health and you know Gina was ha had a serious illness so she had to make a drastic effort immediately but for most of us who don't have those illnesses I'm not saying change your diet drastically take more sm small steps drink more water get more sleep eat more veg the more colors that are on your plate the older you get the more you have to invest in your health it's a statement of fact so we need to look at ourselves, look at what we eat. I've, I've known people who've changed their diet. They've come off their blood pressure medication, their diabetes tablets, lost weight. It affects your mood. And I seriously believe it affects your mental health. Too much sugar gives you a rush. You get a high and then you come back low and it seems really low because you've had that sugar. It affects your state of mind. I'm so happy for Gina. I'm so glad that she has not had to take any medication for so many years because all those medications would have had a side effect on her too. It's brilliant. She wouldn't be an, well, she wouldn't be an American now. She, she wouldn't, wouldn't be, be an American. American. I mean, literally, yeah. I went out to coffee with her and she couldn't open the drink. So, I mean, to see it. And gosh, I've forgotten. Um, Curtis, do you remember we posted the picture of her when all her hair yes, was going? Hair, you know, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. wow, yeah, yeah. So, you know... But Boss lady, so just to ask you, in the in the initial stages of her eating, she went raw, like raw food. Do you advocate she, that as well? But, yeah, I mean, not for like I would never tell Eddie to go raw because I know that where his starting point is for him to go raw, he wouldn't enjoy it and he would just go back. So you have to know where you are. But the nearer you eat to nature the better it is for you because cooking your food diminishes the amount of vitamins in there. You know, if you microwave food, it changes the texture of your food. If, if you heat it up in a pot or you heat it up in a microwave, it tastes different. 
I enjoy my food more when it's heating up. So raw vegan is when you're really just going back to nature and eating your food in its purest form. And it's so easy, so much easier for your body to digest. As I said, Gina had an issue that she had to deal with, which is why she went so extreme. I wouldn't advocate that for people that eat meat. I would just say, write down your diet, see what you're eating, take small steps, see how you feel, and then progress from there. Take it slowly. Because if you change your diet quite drastically, you're more likely to revert back. So that would be my advice. But it's you great know, what Gina's done. So have and what's the name kit? of Gina's book again, Liz? What's the name? Can you tell me, Eddie, please? It's cack-handed cac and it's oh, fabulous. And, and I'm looking at the comments. She does read the audio book. So it's Gina's voice that you will mm. hear if you mm. get the audio um, um, <coughs> book. Um, but, but, but just quickly on one of the things that about black people that's been really difficult with the virus is that a higher percentage of us have underlying health issues. And Blood that's pressure, it. diabetes, yeah, heart, heart, heart disease. There are all sorts heart of things disease. going on. So you know, just just think about that. As I say, we're here. To, we're not here. Excuse me to tell anybody how to live. Just to show you what's there, and then you, you can do what you want to do. So last but section. In saying that, Eddie, sorry, mate. We suffer all those things: blood pressure, diabetes, heart disease, without government intervention. Because of the seasoning, because of the food that right. we eat. The if oil that you cook it in, frying in all the time. First time boss lady gave me rice without putting salt in it. I was, it, there was a riot in the house. Really, Eddie? Don't but judge you, me, Chris. But do you know what happens me. is your taste buds will adapt. And they so adapt. Your, they not, adapt. Not, not they enough to eat you f the food that you eat. But they are adapt they're evolving over a long Listen, period of time. You know no, you eat you, my food. Salt shouldn't be in your diet anyway now, Eddie. Can you see? It's the issues with Dollar States Quiet that I like. <laughs> because if you look at um, <laughs> Mr. Gus John, he's 76 years old. He's he looks healthy, doesn't he? Old. And yeah. healthy. And he's yeah, only, I what, 10 years older than you. So be <laughs> mindful, Eddie. Be mindful. I mean, the one thing I would say, if you're going to change your diet, do your research. Don't just, because not all vegans are healthy. Not all vegetarians are healthy. You have to know what you're eating, what you're replacing your food with. So oh, please yeah. do your oh, research. Oh, stop talking about food now, please. I'm hungry. And a, a big chat to Andy. I saw Andy over the weekend, last weekend, and he's looking... Looking like he's this doing the same. something. He's looking the same. I've seen you in him. And I noticed that you were happy to take a picture next to him. By the way, uh, happy birthday to Alison Bajakin. That's tomorrow. One of our original uh, early day sponsors. Have a, a happy great birthday. Day. Happy birthday, Alison. Happy birthday. Happy Last birthday. installment. Can you sign up? Do you know what? You sound really happy. Like you and I wake up in the bed this morning. Happy birthday, Alison. Um, uh, at my Why don't you leave Donna alone? You've gone for her. I, 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 I don't know why. Because when I come to you, you don't like it. Just leave me, let me be quiet. If I don't want to say something, don't, then I'm exactly. not here. To... I'm not. You I'm not going to go back to you. She don't try. I love you, Don. Right, can we have number three, please? The final in the trilogy for Gina. Well, this book, I, I, a lot of it is based, it's, it's the whole history of my life. It's not just about the comedy aspect of my career. It's being born in East London, in Bethnal Green, and coming up with the skinheads spitting on me when I was eight years old, and the National Front, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, the racism that... Because in America, they think racism is so genteel. They're only starting to get a piece of it now with what's been happening with Meghan and, and, and Harry and Meghan and all that. But before that, they didn't realise that the, the, the Brits were the architects of racism. Of course. But they, Americans, Americans, all they think is, ooh, you know, tea and crumpets and Hugh Grant and everybody's very sweet and genteel. They don't understand. So, I'm, you know, in the book, I completely... Tear that shit wide open and let people know what we what I went through as a child in London in the 70s and 80s. And it was very cathartic writing this book. It was very cathartic because all your and you don't realize you're holding on to all this anger, resentment, and tension in your chest. As I was writing the book, it all just poured out of me. And it was like, oh, it was a release. So yeah, yeah, more women should definitely do that. When's the last time you cried, Gina? 
uh, on Saturday. <laughs> One of my writers, young black woman, Ibe Inyang, young Nigerian woman, got married on Saturday. And I hate weddings. Weddings bore me. And she's Nigerian. Her husband, her now husband is Haitian. It was a beautiful wedding. She looked amazing. And the doors opened and she walked in wearing that dress, looking so beautiful. I cried like a little bitch. <laughs> I hate admitting that because I'm tough. But yeah, that was on Saturday. Cried like a, cried like she come out of my own vagina. When I saw gays go camping, or whatever you decided to call it. <laughs> that, that foolishness just made me laugh out loud. You did not have that freedom with yeah. Lena here. Yeah, I mean, when I was coming up as a comedian, I got famous first on the black comedy scene. That was where I got big. After Blouse and Skirt, I was selling tickets to black audiences. And um, I come from an African family. My mom's very Christian. So the whole gay thing was just not something that she was wanting to hear. And also when I was doing comedy, people were like, oh, you can't come out because black audiences are super homophobic. You're going to lose what you've built so far. So there was that fear. And then also there was the thing of, look, I'm already a black woman in this industry. I've already got two things against me. I didn't want to add something else for them to box me in with. So these were the fears that were swirling around in my head and why I never wanted to come out publicly. The rumors were out there. You know, I beat up a couple of comedians who took who, <laughs> it's, in the, it's in the book, it's in the book. But I did, I beat up a couple of comedians who chat who, who were who outed my business before I was ready for it to be outed. Um but I got to America and you know, I was like, am I gonna carry on being the same person? I don't really want to. I'm, I'm getting to a point where I was like, I don't care anymore. I played the game, it didn't work for me. I'm just gonna be who the hell I want to be. And I've, I've got to a point where I built up a good audience of people who love my comedy. And I'm like, if they're not gonna, if they're gonna stop coming to my shows because they don't like who I love, then maybe, maybe they don't, they didn't really like me properly for me in the first place. So yeah, I just, I didn't want to make a big deal out of coming out. I didn't go, I'm going to come out. I am gay. I just kind of slipped it into my shows in conversation. I was throwing a joke here and there. I was throwing a joke there. And then you know what? When I did that, I'd always been a great comedian. But when I did that, I became a much better comedian because there was no fear. There was, there was no, oh, somebody might say something that, you know, somebody who might have seen me in a club might say something. That fear went away because I'm like, this is who I am. And there's nothing you can say to me because I got nothing to hide anymore. And I became, my comedy went from here, which is pretty good, to here. Anyway, I'm a free person now. I don't care anymore. I am who I am. I'm rich, bitch. I'm <laughs> <laughs> the bit that I did cut out is Curtis who said to Gina, uh, how rich are you, Gina? How much money have you got? And Donna was like, "Don't do that. You're giving Don't us Jamaican. That. You're giving us Jamaicans a bad name." I said, "But, but no, that he's just being himself." <laughs> Gina loved talking yeah, about well, money. You know. Donna didn't want to hear it, and she so did, did you see now, that? Donna, you my know? eyes. I was like, I was I like, no, I don't see this. She promised, um, me a, um, she promised me a slap, so I'm waiting. Is it, is it, Donna, do you think it's the honesty that will always make some people feel uncomfortable? Because that's a raw honesty. Even, it's just so raw, and we know what to expect, isn't it, Donna? I think, it, I think it's refreshing. I think more people want that level of honesty. Look at the appreciation for Professor Gus John. Look at the appreciation for Gina. We want that honesty. We want people to talk to us and share the experiences that we know happen in our lives every day. We don't want the fluff. We don't want the dressing up of the argument. We want the reality of other people's lives because life is just so hard and so real, Eddie. And so you, it's refreshing when you get somebody who talks in the way that Gina does. And the book, trust me, when she, even it's her reading it, it's just... It's her, isn't it? My son is like, Mum, is that the same lady that was on the audiobooks? Because he's been listening with me. It's so her, and we need more of that. Long may she reign, and all of the things that she said. Oh, I'm what? Definitely... Yeah, that book, Cack Handed. Cack Handed. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. But her honesty, even the bit where she writes that, you know, her and Curtis hated each other. Ha <laughs> ha! Let me just say that again. It, you know, I understood that because Curtis is very difficult. So, you know, for me, it was a really good read. Um, 
And I appreciate her honesty. I appreciate her direction. Do you know what I appreciate more than anything? At that time, her honesty about the clashes and the experience she had being of African, um, being of Nigerian parentage versus the expectations, experiences she had with people from the Caribbean backgrounds, how yeah. that even went on to her job. Like yeah. me, yeah. We, we very rarely in the black community speak in an honest way about what we know to be true in terms of that yes. disparity of thinking. But boo, she boo. did it so boo, eloquently. Boo. It wasn't uncomfortable. It was just real. Yeah. I think that, you know, one of the things that you realise is that people originally from Africa who came from Africa directly or from the Caribbean didn't really meet until they... I don't know what's the matter with him. Didn't what is he meet, doing now? Didn't, Do you just want skunk, me to take him out? Him, him and Skunk. <laughs> him and Skunk. and then, it, They didn't meet until they came to England. And it was really, really horrible. And then it, there's some point at some, we'll discuss it, where we call our children African names and we, you know, we were holding on mm. to it. But that wasn't, you know, how many people. It wasn't always the case. It wasn't it was always, not the, always case. the case. And it's a no. journey. It's great the way she does it. And as I said, the, the, the most similar book that I've read to it is a Carla's book, where he yes. kind of talks about, you know, the journey. And it's, it's fun, it's educational, but it's edgy too. What, what Gina said, is that if we look, let's get the book and then we'll work out a date and then we'll do a book review. She's agreed to. But come I thought this was the last review. show. What are you saying? You're giving mis mixing. All right, I'll, I'll wait until you come off to talk about that because <laughs> you, you're not in that at all. I didn't mention your name at all in that. But you I'm know, it's for a Carla's book as you speak. <laughs> a great lesson, White, is that that script is really good from Gina is that you learn that anything that's holding you back if you take control of it and you give it out it's it gives you a level of freedom her being mm -hmm. honest about her sexuality and I'm sure we're all hiding things that we're scared but how did you feel when and you went to her house then and we could see it but she didn't announce it how did you feel well, it's her choice. Huh? No, it's that's, her not choice. What I'm, that's not what I'm asking. Because it's her choice. That, that's an easy answer. That's the kind of answer that Donna would give me. I want to. We're just talking about everybody being honest. So when you saw it, were you surprised? Or were you like everybody else who probably thought, you know, she's different, isn't I, she? I, I wasn't surprised, no. I, I, you know, I felt honoured, actually, to be invited to her house to be shown this environment. Where she and that she free. trusted us enough to hold on to that piece of information that she hadn't shared with the world. I was honoured because it meant that she had a level of trust and respect for us. And so that's what I felt when I walked in. She was so comfortable. It was just, she was in her element and in her place. But, you know, it's great that she's come out about it and it's freed her up and opened her up to even more. Um, I, I, I knew Gina was a lesbian the first time I met her. We were at a club and I asked her to dance and she said no. <laughs> <laughs> You're too funny. You're Spoke too for funny. itself. Spoke for itself. <laughs> yeah. She oh had to God. be. She had to be turned. Had to be, way, boss lady. Had to she be. Can turn you down. Is it? Imagine. Yes, sex the beast. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. The truth will set you free, as uh, yeah. Jolie well, said. Uh, Do you know what? I think she's inspiration for for a whole generation of women, black women, who. You know, this is one of the themes that have come up on H and H around sexuality, sexual identity. They have never had those conversations, and if they have had their feelings, they've not had the the the, the strength or the resilience to talk about it. For me, her book and the way that she speaks about it. I mean, you're right. I, I, I mean, the first time I ever saw her, I was like, I didn't think that she was. You know, I thought she was a, a lesbian. Um, but I think just her having the conversation and the way that she talks about it in the book. Absolutely brilliant. Well, it's, it's and so it's, I would like to come out free. to you all and yeah. tell you that I am. Uh, uh, yeah, shut up. You're uh, vegetarian. You're vegetarian. You're vegetarian. <laughs> <laughs> you can't catch a break. You can't catch a break. <laughs> so, um, look, um, it's a lovely place to end it with somebody being free. I remember sending her a message after seeing her Shola and Kelechi on Sky just break up the place, and she says. Uh, you bastard, you wish you could speak as freely as me. And I thought, well, you're right. You know, I do. So, but, you know, everybody's got a different job, haven't they? Uh, Boss Lady, just give us the last few comments, please, and then we'll wrap this thing up because it's been brilliant. But it's got to be, jeez, look at the time. <laughs> Sorry, come on. Um, I just, not comments, but I just, when, just don't forget the, 
boat party on August the 14th with next, some big next, whites. And also, next Saturday, no, you don't need a COVID passport to get in. The rules don't apply to that event. Now Am I I'm right, torn. Eddie? Do I go to the, the gallery at the, 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 uh, to see the artwork or do I go to the boat, though? One's in the day, one's in the evening. Well, no, the, the, exhibition, the, sorry, the exhibition is on. Um, right through the month of oh, August. Okay. What, what, what okay. Gus is talking about is where he will be giving given a speech on the I afternoon of Saturday the 14th. But if you go at 7 o'clock on a Thursday, which is when I think I'm going to go back, then Stafford, uh, uh, and I wish I could, one day in my book, I'll tell you the kind of morning I've had around <laughs> Stafford and the BBC. I mean, he's literally, I think he's literally the most terrifying man so from the BBC's perspective because if you think i'm intense i mean he's 20 i mean he's properly intense and he's properly yeah. got a mission which is to release people from their shackles and let people know you're trying to keep it like this but i'm bringing it together like this and yeah. i think this exhibition is the making of him you know so that that's okay. just my personal opinion um were there any final things to do with gina boss lady uh no just the the love going out for a Somebody wanted to know the name of her book again. If you can put that out there, please, Eddie. <laughs> what is the matter with you? You've Just got to case. get back on the bike. Oh, Come on. You can do it. Right. You can do it. Her book is called Cack Handed. Please go and get it. You can get it on audio as well. That's right. You can do this. You're bigger than that. Yeah, don't let Curtis get in the way of your development. Right. Very proud of and, you. And she, she, she's the D. She's the D. She's the G. She's the G. And it's quite interesting. Lots of people have picked up about her health and her journey. You could do a show on that, Eddie, on how to become a vegetarian. Oh, and lots oh, of people no. are talking about their nah, health nah, issues. Nah, and stuff nah. like that. Not interested how in doing that. Become a vegetarian. Why, why really? would I do a show like that? No, but not I, just how to become a vegetarian. Just being healthy. There was a whole trail of healthy, people coming. Yes, healthy. On yes, there. How healthy. To a That's good. Good. Can I just say that? Can I get artsy? No, no, no. <laughs> no. Right. Anyway, so, we've got some top tips. I think you don't eat meat anymore. <laughs> now. <laughs> so, so one of the. Let me just give me my bit. Give me my moment now, right? So one of the things that's been really interesting about doing this is watching people grow. And even though it's an absolute nightmare in my house, um, watching people grow. So Lisa's done her PT. She's doing a nutrition course and she's trying to help people. So here's a video that she did uh, yesterday in the gym. So I've got five tips to help you feel more safe and confident in the gym. Number one, go with a buddy, a partner, a work colleague. I go with a husband, my husband. It makes me feel more comfortable and more confident. Number two, go with your headphones. Have your playlist, know what you're listening to. Music inspires you and it blocks out your environment. Number three, go with a training plan. Know what you're gonna do. The worst thing is going in the gym and kind of working it out on the spot. Number four, Find out the peak hours and stay away. Lastly, don't watch anybody else. You don't know what their journey is or how long they've been training. Just focus on you and your goals. Listen, gyms are pretty safe environments to go into, but like me, I do feel a little bit anxious and I lack a little bit of confidence. I hope these tips help. Please like, share and follow for weekly tips. monster i've got to tell you so it's about women going into the gym right and that's what it is while all that was going uh, this was donna's reaction that's the only way miss cosgrove miss cosgrove wild night last night huh miss cosgrove <laughs> listen try to stay with us for the class this is money you know you don't want to waste your money speaking of money the economic structure that was set up and put in place in the united states after the Industrial Revolution, became a kind of, what's the word, a, a Miss Cosgrove. Miss Cosgrove, wow, wild nights. Man, did you go to sleep at all? We in here watching you sleep. <laughs> I see you laughing, but I, I don't even think you know what the hell I'm talking about at this point. 
All right, hang in there, Miss Cosgrove. We got a lot to go through. Now, once the funding structures were allocated to different proximities within the economic structure itself, that's when the U.S. government started to allocate different funding programs to. <laughs> 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 Excellent. As I said, pri privately is an absolute nightmare. <coughs> but publicly, it's a, it's a pleasure to watch you grow. Follow on Instagram if you want more tips. Just What's the address that in on there. Instagram? <laughs> What's the address, you know? Lisa.nesta at Instagram. Thank you very much, boss lady. Thank you. Look after Thank yourself. You. Thanks, thanks for Thank you, everybody. Yeah. Thank you. Have a wonderful afternoon. Thank, Thank you. you very much. And and also, you know, to 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 look at you and to have interviewed you on my show before, and then to watch you grow and be an advocate for Croydon, who goodness gracious me, need advocates right now. Let me know because we talked about the Tottenham riots, but there was the big old furniture shop Reeves, wasn't it? Which that's was one right, of the yeah. iconic images. A, a local authority that's broke, um, crime stop and search. You've got some real challenges there. So you got your work. Uh, so it's a pleasure to watch you, to be with you, to listen to you, to reason with you. Um, I, I, ha I, I do listen to you, reason. I haven't got involved, but I am watching you. Tell everybody where they can catch your own chat show. So H and H, Harder Bread and Horlicks will be on Tuesday between eight and ten. Um, we stream it live to Facebook on my page, or oh, it's to the public actually. I stream it live to the public now, so look out for it. H and H, Harder Bread and Horlicks, Tuesdays and Thursdays. What time? Eight till ten. God bless you. Thank you so much. Uh, love, love you both. Bye. Love, love you, baby. Thank Miss you, you already. Okay. Thanks for this a lot more. You, <laughs> you've been there for the duration, mate. I have. I've survived the cut. <laughs> the, <laughs> the culling, yes, yes. <laughs> so, um, listen, um, thank you. Um, well done to you, sir. I don't think people we'll say this drink. enough to you, Eddie. Well done. I think it, you and Boss Lady, it's been, for me, this journey through the year and more from the lockdown began and we started this show been mentally inspiring for me and keeping me safe. Thank yeah. you. I mean, the way that you can take a serious subject and make us look at it in a different way, make us laugh and feel uncomfortable about enjoying a moment is brilliant. You have a special talent, sir, and I hope that you do make the money that you deserve from it. You know, now you've spent all that money on those teeth, I really do hope <laughs> you get something to bite into, yeah? God bless you, Curtis. Look after you. I see you Saturday. Too, I see Saturday see and Saturday. Sunday. See yeah, yeah. All right then. Um, so there you go. You know, I want to thank um, Gillian. It was our first ever sponsor uh, from Travel Counselors. Alison Bajakin, uh, Alison Delaney, uh, Andy as well was uh, brilliant. Not forgetting, and of course, you know, ACLT, African Caribbean Leukemia Trust, doing absolutely amazing work. And also, you, Bele, who came in. Um, check them out. They're uh, an initiative that is uh, there to help uh, community-based events. Um, I want to tell you um, also, thank you to some of the people behind the scenes. Sharon, thank you very much. You have a lot of patience listening to the dozens of people who have phoned up uh, to sponsor No Joke and have come through with absolutely sweet FA. So uh, I do appreciate you for taking some of that stress away. The Media Mafia from day one. Uh, always there, an absolute wrong and we love you. Uh, Steph, uh, appreciate you putting those things together uh, for us continually, even now, uh, I'm and Naya. Uh, I really do appreciate that. What I was talking to, Curtis, to Curtis about before was there are a number of people who've been on the platform who've written books, I've realised, you know. Um, uh, Angie Lamar, who was there with us uh, from the beginning. Angie does a walking um, club on a Wednesday. It looks absolutely fabulous. I'm on this thing at the minute where I'm trying to do 10,000 steps. Uh, please check out Angie Lamar and find out. Uh, uh, but Jay Blades has got a, a book out. We know Jean has got a book out. Jean has promised us to go and do it. Shola's got a book out. We've had uh, Alex Wheatle uh, on here. So we've had a number of people. So maybe 
um, maybe if we can work it out, maybe I'll do an Instagram thing where we do a, I've always wanted to do a book club. So maybe we'll do five or six, get a book, read the book and then get the person on. And then we can get you on. I think you can do that on Instagram. You get you on to ask a person a question about, about the, um, the, the, the book that they've um, written. I um, also want to tell you, look, check out Quincy and uh, Rudy Liquid uh, has got our old fashioned weather girl on um, Rihanna Skippy. I don't know if you remember her. Uh, so check out um, Rudy Liquid. Rudy Liquid is doing fabulous things. In fact, a lot of the ideas, if I'm honest with you, from uh, No Joke, have been nicked from the way uh, that he does it. Uh, Daddy Oni's going to be back with a fixture list. Also, you can um, check that out. Um, the legendary mastermind will play out because um, he comes on uh, this afternoon between five and seven. But um, uh, that's it, really. Um, it's been fabulous. Honestly, I didn't know, you know, when Curtis Fermi and Angie, I didn't know, didn't had any idea what it was going to be. But it's been really great to be able to, away from the BBC, talk directly um, in a different way and deal with subjects in a different way. The reaction, you buying the T-shirts, the support that you have given people who have watched it has been magnificent. I've left it up there. I haven't started it again every time. So you can see for yourself how much has been raised from day one. Uh, to people like Touch T who came around in the early stages and when you need that, to people like Arnold Chillingford, uh, to Hugh who come around and kind of, you need to be hardwired, uh, put in a camera for Curtis. So all that sort of thing. I really want to say thank you, you know, end of one thing, beginning of another. Or maybe if I can get, you imagine if I could get Curtis, Gina, Richard, and Slim for Christmas. Would would you would you think should, you think we should do that? If I if I could get there, even if it's do you think we should go for? I don't know. Tell me. Uh, let me know if you think that's something we can go for. But look, please look after yourselves. Please take it easy. Look after your mental health. It's a big thing at the moment for me. You know, and lots of those videos we spend our time watching they trigger things, and you can't trigger something unless you're talking about it to to, to chill it out. Uh, so from us here at uh, Hashtag No Joke, I just want to take this opportunity to say thank you very much. Well, just to remind you, I'm sitting in for Vanessa Feltz on BBC Radio London, 70 cent. Give me some love, man. Uh, and on the 16th, I have the Met Commissioner coming in to see me uh, to answer your question. So uh, Dame Cressida Dick is coming in uh, to answer your question. So please uh, check me out on BBC uh, Radio London. Uh, so I think I've said thank you to everybody, but you, Robbie. But you know, I don't have to tell you, brother, man. Uh, you know. So look after yourself. Take it easy. And um, we'll see you again one time. God bless. Legendary Mastermind bring you a carnival experience like no other. Bank Holiday Monday, the 30th of August. Fifth Avenue, D night. DJ Lully, Shaq D, DJ Will, and of course, Mastermind. PA, D Nail, and General <laughs> Levy will be in the building. This is a ticket only event, and the tickets are limited. £10 get you in the door, plus booking fee. Contact TLMUK.com slash shop. This event will be filmed, sponsored by Supermoke Alapia. Oh yeah!